Guys, everyone, welcome, welcome to the first Beastly Thought Show in a very long time. How is everyone doing? Uh, it has been a very long time since we have done this show. Welcome, everyone. If you're brand new here, uh, this is a podcast we used to do a very long time ago. We are going to be talking about video games today. We're going to be talking about E3. Uh, yeah, we are very excited to be back. Uh, we're really looking forward to today's show. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. I'm going to introduce these two right here. To my uh, right is my good friend, Beastly Gamer. How are you, my friend? It is good to see you. How's it going, dude? I'm doing great, man. Uh, this feels so familiar. It's it's kind of a magical moment for me. I uh, I don't know. I've been seeing you guys kind of in my dreams. I won't get into the details <laughs> of the dreams. dreams. <laughs> but uh, it's been a, you know something I've been looking forward to for a long time, getting together with some of my good, good friends who actually helped me start out in YouTube. And uh, you and the other gentleman here, I forgot his name. It's been so damn long. The last time I saw this guy, first of all, the last time I saw you, Robbie, you didn't have all that hair in your face. Now you look like you've been riding through oh, like you know. the desert with super glue on your chin. <laughs> and like all <laughs> the right. dust has been yeah, just collecting. Yeah. It looks really cool. And this guy here, Mr. Swole, Swole time. Look at this guy. I'm Han Swallow, just like you know. Han Swallow. <laughs> <laughs> Not too damn nerdy. Uh, this has been... A long time in the making. I'm very, very, very happy we were able to do this. I love you guys. It's been too far, far too long. We tried to get our friend Inner Black Ninja, a nine to five gamers previously known, uh, to join us today, but he had some conflicts with his schedule. So hopefully at another date we can get him in there because we are the founding members or some of the founding members mm. of the Beastly Thoughts Live show. And uh, for the people who are, are, are new to this kind of change in Mr. Robbie's schedule, we did this uh, for a number of years and uh, actually uh, garnered quite a following with our podcast. And I'm super excited to be a, f a part of this kind of revival or, or, or at least a reunion of what we used to do. So carry on, sir. I'm sorry. It's your podcast. Absolutely. No worries. It, it is uh, good to be back. So basically, guys, how we're going to be doing this show today. Um, we don't know if this is going to be a weekly thing necessarily yet or a monthly thing. We want to make this a regular show once again. Uh, a lot of new things will be coming in the future, but for now, we want to get this show started on a very good note. So we're going to be doing some E3 predictions today. We're going to be running down a number of video game news that have happened this week. Uh, and we're just going to generally have a good time, you know, hang out. Everyone's going to have a lot of fun. This is going to be awesome. It is amazing to see these great friends of mine again and to be in a video call with them once again. And I uh, hope everyone in the chat is doing well. Hope you guys are having an awesome day and thank you so much for joining us. Without further ado, though, guys, I think we should start the show with a little section we used to do of what you've been playing. Beastly Gamer, take it away, my friend. What have you been playing, dude? <laughs> it's me! Oh, man. Uh, let me just start off by saying thank you, Sony. Uh, thank you, PlayStation in particular, because, you know, Sony TVs and, you know, the little knickknacks and doodads aren't doing it for me these days. But the video games have been really hitting a, a high, high mark for me, kind of a precipice in gaming. I recently uh, completed God of War, uh, which is undoubtedly my, my game of the year contender at this point. Uh, very seldom do, have I played a video game that's reached that peak of perfection in my mind. It's not a perfect game, and no one could ever say, oh, this game is perfect. Of right, course, right. you can't say that because it's subjective. But uh, I can't recall the last time I played a game and felt uh, such a magical connection to the world, the characters, the gameplay mechanic as I did God of War. And that's from someone who previously wasn't a huge fan of God of War. Uh, they, they kind of had this repetitive feel in the past, and you, yeah. you, you can attest to this, not too nerdy, that over the yeah. years it, it kind of hit a brick wall. Of course, they look better every time, but it's kind of the same thing, and they completely turned that on its head and, and turned that world upside down and, and taking him from one mythology to another and kind of changing the way the game played, the way it looked, the way it felt. That's amazing. And that sticks in my mind at the forefront right now. But another game that I just started playing yesterday uh, is uh, Detroit Become Human. And uh, not too nerdy. I don't know if you picked this up. Uh, it I is... picked it up. I did not play it yet. So that's well, I'm going to play that soon. <laughs> it is. Breathe, breathe, breathe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I almost couldn't say it. Yeah. Um, the game is, is unbelievable. Uh, the way that uh, uh, Quantic Dream was able to kind of meld these three stories together and, and the the becoming human aspect of the game is just unbelievable I, I i'm not going to spoil any of that and i'll also say it's one graphically one of the, the best 
looking games on the console as well. The characters, the character models, it's it's one of those kind of, you know, Quantic Dream games you sit and you watch the story, you know, play out. But one thing I found is there are myriad ways, there's so many choices, uh, and, and it's not like a small difference like we would have had in Beyond Two Souls or, yeah. or Heavy Rain. Uh, you, My wife, she plays right next to me on her 4K TV. We're literally, I showed you earlier, Robbie, side by side. So yeah, she has yeah. the headphones on, and I got, you know, the, the surround sound playing. So she's in her own world, I'm in my own world, and we'll play through a chapter together. Actually, we're paused now. But we play through a chapter together, and at the end of the chapter, we're, we're looking and seeing that some people are with us, some people we never met. Just, uh, you know, you can come out of a situation playing as the same person in the same section with different items on your person that change the way you play in the next section. It's just really, it's mind-blowing, breathtaking what Quantum, Quant, uh, Quantic Dream was able to do. Uh, with that game and that's what i've been playing uh, of course i always play you know my nintendo switch when i'm on the go you know, yeah so baby it's... hell yeah absolutely nintendo switch is awesome i love it and that's what i've been doing but i'm dying to catch up with you guys and find out what you've been playing yeah right on hector take it away dude all right so the last game that i played was uh god of war um i completed oh, that so in the man. god of war mode so that Ooh, no, I, 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 the I, hardest I, I mode jumped. I jumped straight into it. So let me tell you. Hector, you're out of your mind, dude. I died. Oh my so, God. Can I tell you how many times I died? I turned on the game and I died. I, like, I died in the first fight part. I'm like, shit, dude. You probably, this is he like... probably lost to the tree at the beginning but... when he tried to cut it down. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you right now that um, towards, it felt weird in the game. That Towards the end of the game, um, no spoilers, I'm not saying anything. Towards the end of the game, yeah. I felt like it got easier. Like I don't know if it's a com- I don't know if it's a combination of me just getting used to the mechanics finally that I just got in such a good rhythm and I finally you know leveled up the kid and stuff like that so he the actually boy. helped me with my combos Trace. with Leveled that up the boy. boy you know I, <laughs> oh. I, Trace like when you level him up and his shots and all that and stun people like you could do sick combos and using him I think I it got easier towards the end but like there was I- a huge I, I gotta ask. Also, God of War, man. Like I, God of War. Mode. I played the game on normal mode. That's my usual go-to. I never go easy because oh, I'm not. Oh come on! You gotta go hard yes. difficulty, Beastly. No, you gotta crank it up. Listen, listen, wanna... I'm not. I'm not young like you guys. Come on, I'm Beastly. What's the excuse? Anymore. Come on. Okay. I just gave you one. I'm fucking old. But <laughs> yeah. I played. I played regular mode, normal mode, Hector. And when I got done, I played for about 16 hours. 16 between 16 and 18 hours, I would say. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I'm thinking. I'm, my mind is completely off. I'm thinking of the wrong it's game. The old age. It's I put, fine. <laughs> I, yeah, I just, I just said that. I put probably uh, between thirty and forty hours in. I'm sorry, to actually beat the regular campaign. Yeah. How many hours did you put in on this hard mode? Uh, I would say about thirty. About thirty hours. I did. Are you but, kidding me? Because there's a thing. Like I got used to certain things. Unfortunately, I didn't think it's a horrible thing. But the trolls were all pretty much similar, even though they're different. Those you werewolves know, are full of fire shit. Trolls, there's like ice trolls. If you think about the trolls, they're all were similar moves that people like I caught on quickly by luck because at any time they picked up their leg, if you timed it, if you threw the axe at their leg, it stunned them. And then you could run up and attack them. So every time they picked up their leg, I no never matter, do that ever. I did it by accident. Um, and every time they, they all take that one step and they like scream at you. When they scream at you, you throw the axe right in their face, it takes off a huge chunk of their life because it stuns them back. Yeah, and when they yeah. stun back, you go run up and do close attacks. So, like, I learned all that stuff by, like, just by testing out when I died. I, I, I learned that and I used those moves. And, like, they pretty much were the same. It's just that there's different attacks between the ice and fire, but you just have to learn what to use. Um, besides that, I was blown away by the graphics. Like, and you're talking about someone that has a 1080 Ti graphics card and i yeah, still was blown yeah. away by the graphics i think it was also one other mechanic that added to that was the no cuts when they did no cuts from You're the so cutscene right. to to that like it just add to the experience i never seen a game pull that so off yeah. yeah it was immersive it made it the experience immersive for sure it, it was really cool like we're on the journey with them and i think that that's what they wanted they want you to feel close to them that's why they zoomed in kratos for once you're right there over his shoulder and like they wanted you to feel everything he's feeling and he's going with the journey and like it was just it was insane because i didn't expect that i thought that camera angle would get in your way and like it's gonna be horrible but it for some awesome. It, they, it was the right camera angle for this type of story that they're telling. 
And I, I thought that everything was just, I was blown away by the way they designed the game for the normal one, because I still didn't beat like all the Valkyries. I have, I think I beat. Yeah, I was going to ask you, I haven't fought one Valkyrie. I did seven. What? I oh my God, be so, I haven't done it. Wow. I have to, two are almost impossible for the, the mode I'm on, dude. I, I'm trying my best, but it's almost impossible. Like I, I got to, I got to level up a lot more. So. But. What did you guys think about the, 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 the contrast and I guess the character, the arc of the character compared to what we've seen in the past? Of course, we know Kratos angry. One thing I did miss, usually in God of War, you're going to see Kratos, uh, you know, manhandle a few women. But that didn't really happen. Yeah. I thought the same thing, I too. Was, was, no sex. I was like, what's with that? I was like, yeah. this, it looks so good. You'll be able to well, see every detail. But nothing happened. But the character fully 3d and, titties that uh, i yeah, didn't see him i'm, I'm like disappointed a dead or alive throw a dead or alive girl but anyway um <laughs> oh the, the way the character arc of kratos was something i totally didn't expect to see what he had went through in this game but no spoilers of course you know it's a video game and yeah. story yeah. it really caught me off guard and i appreciated that to me that the world building and of course you know the story that they told and how it's going to transcend this game blew me away in, in every single way. It really exceeded all my expectations and, and my imagination of what this game is going to be. See, so the thing is, I'm, I'm not a father or anything like that, right? But, like, I, I got the story that they're trying to tell. Like, the way that they say, this is a grown-up Kratos. You know, there's no longer that hooking up with every chick that he sees type Kratos. Now, like, he, he's trying to find a way to be himself, but yet still be a father at the same time. I think that's what right. the story they're trying to show the whole time. You know, that, that he, he has to try to be a father. You know, and every time, that's why he, you could tell he wasn't close to his son. He didn't know his son. And throughout the journey, they pretty much, in a cheesy way, they found each other. You know what I mean? Like, even though they're with each other the whole time, they found each other throughout the journey because mm -hmm. he went from calling them boy the whole time to actually calling them by mm -hmm. his name and caring about Trace. it. Right. Like, and yeah, I think that yeah. was, I think that's the reason why they, they pounded that boy, boy, boy. They kept saying it over and over so again. So you could because, feel it when it finally happened. Yeah, when he yeah. finally said it by his name, like, it was like, whoa. You know, like that, I think that's what was the point of it, that he kept, they kept pressing it. It was like a story about a father and a son. It was so much layers of this, but it, it was pretty much, that's what it was about. And like, you just got to experience their journey like together. Yeah, so. personally, that's what I absolutely loved about that story. I thought the characters were so deep. I just thought it was so, there were so many emotional, wonderful moments in that game that I didn't expect just between Kratos and Atreus. Freya was a wonderful character. Ooh, uh, Freya. <laughs> Mimir, like they're like I love Mimir too, just being the head on the boat and on your back all the time, just talking. Like it was such a wonderfully crafted game. Like the combat system, the way they did it, they just reinvented God of War in such a way that the combat was satisfying and it was so much fun. The story was amazing. I really thought it was incredible. You know, feeling connected to Kratos and his son and and uh, Freya and everyone. I thought the character performances were amazing it's just such an emotional story like i didn't expect that from god of war you know i never expect it to be so emotional and to be like holy yeah. shit like there's to, some to heavy me, stuff going on here and it was mm -hmm. an amazing game like just Sony Santa Monica stepped up to the level to me of a rock star of a naughty dog triple a top tier experience if not better with god of war i agree yeah. they kind of are on another level what, now they're on another yeah, level it's like gorilla with horizon uh, yeah. You know, Horizon to me, it took a lot from like The Witcher, but they, they made it their own. They made it enjoyable. They added some incredible gameplay mechanics that made it feel unique. And to me, that elevated Gorilla. Uh, to me, Sony Santa Monica, they've always been, you know, very no, well known for, for the God of War series. But the crafting of this game, the engine, the way they built it, the story, the, the world building. Yeah. The world serpent. It's such a smart uh, approach to everything. I really think it, they just did it with this really game. It really elevated them and, and really put them in the upper echelons to me as far as developers go. But I don't want to stay on God of War for well, one, last <laughs> one last so thing. God of War. One last thing. Yeah, one it last is, thing it is an War. amazing fucking game though. It really, is. I gotta talk about like you said a combat system. Like I did not know that. Like as soon as I jumped in God of War and I was like, wow, this is like Dark Souls. Like there's Dark it Souls. It's hard as shit. Fighting. It really is. It's like, really yo, hard. This, I was waiting. Yeah. Keep in mind, I started God of War, so I didn't know it's going to be like this on that mode. I'm like, yo, I died so many times. But once I started to get the hang of it, it was fulfilling just like if I was playing Dark Souls on the hardest mode, then that's that's what you let get. Me, let me expound on that, okay, uh, uh, Hector? When I first started playing, of course, Kratos has the axe. You have a completely different play, play style mechanic. You want to throw it all the time. You want to go up, you know, get some heavy and some medium attacks. But at a certain part of the game, you get a different weapon. Yep. And that changed everything yeah. for me. 
And then, you know, as I'm using my shield more and using, and, you know, switching back and forth because the game makes you switch back and forth routinely, it does become that Dark Soul experience. It, you have to parry. You have to time things yeah. perfect. You got to jump out of the way. And it's, it's very unforgiving. So, yeah. But- God of War, man. It was- There's so many mechanics there. Just with the axe itself, like you could throw the axe, right, and leave it there, and then run around and time it so that when you pull, call it back, it can hit it hits someone everybody, else. Everybody, yeah. And there's also awesome. enemies yeah. that you want to freeze because when you throw the axe, it freezes them. So mm-hmm. I threw the axe, froze them, and then I ran forward, did the shield attack, and just used hand combat while they're frozen. So there's so many things you could do to switch it up. There's so many different mechanics that you could use that you don't. It's by personal choice. So it's, it's, you know, it's got to work. Ending the God of War conversation, just a quick question for both yeah. of you. Because yeah. for me, the answer is yes. Is God of War in your discussion for Game of the Year 2018 right now? 100%. Oh, yeah. yeah. Then it's got, uh, like, I think it's going to be a, the time of when it was released is hard to be got a Game of the Year. Anytime you release this early, people forget about it. It, it sucks. So they, they tend to forget about true. games this early, especially before the summer. Um, so it's kind of hard. But besides that, it... I don't see it's gonna be tough for other games to surpass surpass that because they push the limits of the PS4. Like I didn't they push think the PS4, the PS4 could, limits. Yeah, they they could go like this. You know what I mean? Like it just it was it played it played well. It was pretty smooth and like I turned it down. I turned it down for 4K. Once I switch to where oh, the performance mode this all day long. Dude, once I did that, I'm talking about majority of times it was 60. They dropped the 40, 45, mm-hmm. but like you. It was a big difference. Once I experienced a difference, you're never going back to 30 frames per second. You can't for that game because the combos and everything, especially the mode I was playing, and you need every yeah, you little. Are fucking crazy. Yeah, you, can't, you need everything. Every I forgot little... how crazy you are. <laughs> so, <not laughs> That's dirty. true. Your name should be not too easy or not too easy. <laughs> but this is the guy who plays every game and makes like all the bad choices. So I guess playing right. it on the hardest mode would also be <laughs> yeah. a bad choice. Makes sense, right? Yeah, Detroit. We'll see what <laughs> yes, that does. <laughs> oh man, I can't wait to, to hear what you have to say about Detroit. So we'll get back with that soon. Robbie, would you like to continue? Let's start with the read. Yeah. Do you guys want to read some notes, possibly? Sure. All right, let's get into some gaming news of the week, guys. The first bit of news we have this week in regards to the PlayStation 4. Uh, the PS4 is ending nearing the end of its life cycle, according to Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO John Codera. He went on to suggest that 2021 will be the time when the company looks beyond the PS4 and into the future. So what do you guys take away from this? What are your first thoughts on 2021 sort of being the year where they look beyond... It's- the PS4. It's not true. It's not true. Actually, I watched a video by Red Dragon that came out either this morning or late last night uh, that this story was actually picked up and was a falsified story. There was no three-year uh, thing for the you know the PS5. It was never said yeah. during that meeting. Right. Uh, that was actually music to my my Sony loving ears. <laughs> Sony but, um, loving ears. It's true. You guys Still the same it. old beast of gamer. I can't help myself. But yeah, uh, when when it comes to uh, Sony. They're dominating right now. Of course, I think Nintendo, if things continue the way they are, Nintendo will, will pick up and gain a lot of a lot of pace there. But the PlayStation 4 has been out for five years. Uh, I think seven years is a, a that's a pretty standard life cycle for a console. Yeah. So, you know, the, the conjecture out there is 2020, we're going to see the PS5. And, and to me, that makes perfect sense. Uh, and, and to me. When you have competition like the Xbox One X, which is all hardware with no heart, you can continue to do what you're doing. And, you know, focusing on games. What have you been talking about? PlayStation games. Yeah, and their first party lineup is they still yeah, got so much staggering. coming too. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, uh, they can coast and easily continue to dominate because it doesn't take. And this is proof. You know, you can get any multiplayer on the Xbox One X to to run at 4K, it's 30 frames per second. Yeah. It's stunning to me that they don't do more performance modes on the Xbox One X because everything can run in 60 easy. I but, love um, that. Yeah, that would be an awesome but thing to add. They could continue to, to work on their first-party games, to work on their exclusives, and, and if you build it, they will come. It doesn't take the most powerful console to win. It takes the, the console that has the most imagination and, and the hardest-working developers that actually put originality into the projects, and, and that's something Microsoft definitely needs to learn. I can't wait to see the PS5. Because all this stuff is coming with it, but I'm not in any rush either. I think the PS4 is doing great. 
just letting you know, in order to have performance mode on Xbox One X, you need a game to play with performance <laughs> mode. So, like, I mean, like, you can't develop a mode for no games right now. Like, you just need games. I don't care what they do because you need games that separate yourself. The, the biggest mistake they made, Xbox One X, just to let you know, real quick before we go back to PS4, is they should have never said, oh, we're going to also play on PC. Uh, we'll play the same game on PC. Yeah, but, yeah, that's so the whole I other thing. I played CFDs on my Xbox, and then I played it on my PC. And I'm only running yeah. a GTX 60, uh, uh, 6 gigabyte. But it was like a world-changing thing. I'm looking at both. I've played Gears of War on my PC versus my Xbox. And I'm like, why the hell would I play any anything on my Xbox at this point? So now, you know, if I want to cross-play a game or, or play something, Kate, she signs into hers, and I'll play it in here. And, you know, she'll have the lesser of the, the two. And yeah. I'll have a much more staggering version of a game. I don't understand for the life of me why Microsoft made that decision. It completely, it diminished. I the, think the they're looking things. towards the future. I think they want things to be service-based. Honestly, I think with that whole, like, yeah. Xbox Game Pass thing with all your exclusives, like, all their future exclusives awesome. being included in that, I think they're just looking towards Xbox as a service going forward rather than a hardware business, which... And getting back to the PS4 as well, like, you know, them yeah. putting a specific date, 2021. What that tells me is I don't think that has anything to do with the PS5. I actually think that's just the PS4 in itself. I think, just guessing, PlayStation 5 will be released in 2019. I think that'll be next year. Um, don't make me... I know, I know, Beastly. <laughs> because Sony has already said that it won't be shown at E3, this E3, like they said they won't have any hardware announcements. I think you'll see it next fall, though, and I think they'll support the PS4 for another year or two after that. You know what I mean? It'll kind of get, like, I, maybe some third-party games uh, as well, and then that's kind of when the dust is going to settle on that console. Hector got something I, on his mind. I think I think you're, I, I would say, end of 2019, the beginning of 2020. Here's the thing, though. I think they're not going to announce it. They're going to, I think Sony has now become Apple. They're, they they doing the same exact model. They're doing refreshes. They're doing updates, and they're gonna announce them a month, two months beforehand. I don't think they're mm, gonna. You think oh, so? wait a minute. Because you don't I think, think they'll announce it like E3? I don't think so. I don't think they need to. They have their own platform. They're in the lead right now. Why would they do it? If you think about it, how That's many point. price how many price drops did they had the PS4? Look at what they're selling the PS4 for. Still, do you realize they're almost at 80 million? Cop like copy sold without even without even price drop in two months. You, got a damn you realize point. once they do another price drop, they could get to the hundred million dollar like the hundred million mark quickly. You know how quickly they'll get if they did okay, the basic model is now one fifty. Because once they drop the prices, they get an even cheaper model, it's gonna sell like hotcakes. It's gonna get to that hundred million. And that's the goal that they want to reach. They don't need to surpass a hundred million. Of course they want to, but that's really around eighty million right now? That's crazy, it's, dude. It's, That's insane. 70, yeah. They announced 79 million sold. That's what they're at right now. Me? You could Google that up. Like That's, that, that's wow. 79 That's million sold. So that's why I'm like, they're at that already. If I, I'm almost positive. If I make a mistake, Robbie, can you confirm that? You well, want me to confirm it right now? Yeah, all right, let's all right, all right. That, I don't want to say I, misinformation in there. So while while we're talking no, right no, now, no fake news for Beastly Thoughts. Okay. <laughs> no fake news. Yeah, this is the fakeless news podcast. 79 million. Oh, man. Listen, you guys, I'm getting my very reliable sources to confirm that this is not fake news, that Hector is indeed correct, that the PS4 That's sold 80 sold. million. Uh, oh, my God, you're right. 79, 79 million, million as of March 31st, 2018. So That's it's probably 80. Yeah. That, that was March. That's what I'm yeah. saying. So That's, oh That's March. That's what I meant. Like, And they didn't do a severe price drop, especially they didn't do a price drop oh, for... Oh, it's, it's so like once. But keep in mind when the pro drop, what if the pro drops to 300? You know how many people are going to upgrade to the pro? That, that That's what I'm saying. When I know the, a guy who bought the God of War Pro Edition. Yeah, that would be this guy. How you doing? <laughs> but, to be honest, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think they're going to sell this and push this to the limit. Once they get to the 100,000 mark, they're going to, at that point, they're going to be able to announce a PS5. And I think oh it's going to be something like, okay, you know what? We're going to announce it. At a, a, the PSX, they're going to do their own thing exclusively because now they have the platform. Everyone's yeah. eyes are on PS4 right now. So they have their own platform. They don't have to do E3 anymore. They don't Let me need ask a... you a question. Okay, oh, we know no, that, we E3, know that so. uh, E3 2013 really solidified Sony's initial lead. Um, oh, yeah. Microsoft, they came out in months in that whole idea. It was a huge fumble. It was a catastrophe. Uh, do you think... What what has continued to propel them? My initial thought is... It's been the exclusives. Yeah. We've heard arguments against that, but to the to the tune of 
30 million more consoles? Do you guys think the exclusives have, have propelled them that far? It's hard to say. I think, honestly, more it's been third parties. I think it really has. And just the networking and just the party functionality and just PS4 is like online where people play with their friends. Honestly, like even though they have the exclusives down, I think it's really been about just playing online with friends. I think that's because where your friends go. I think people have just moved over this generation. I think that's really I think what it is. I slightly agree with you, but I also disagree in one thing. Because you're saying playing with friends. The one thing you could do on PS4 that you can't do on any console right now. None of them. Switch slightly, but no console is you get the single player exclusive. There's no other console that you get single player right now. Everything oh, I else agree. Is multiplayer. Yeah. Everyone's battle royale. Everything's right. new multiplayer. And if you want to sit down and have a single player exclusive that's going to entertain you and give you story, the only place you can get that is PS4. No, no one else is doing that right now, and that's what's separating them. Because some people don't want to play multiplayer. Some people it just want to sit down and yeah. have experience on, by themselves. And there's no other place to do that. And the fact that they still give you multiplayer, plus they give you the single player, you have choices. And we know since yeah. that's what people want. That's the reason why Xbox did so poorly with Xbox One in the beginning is because they, they limited the choices of people. They didn't give them choices. They said, this is what we're doing. This is what you have to do. 100%. And once they did that, yeah. they killed them. And PlayStation like, wait a second, we're not going to do that. We're going to give you the option. You could go ahead and resell your games. We're gonna, we're not going to force you to do digital only. We're not going to do always online. So we're right. gonna, you know, that's all they did. And what happened? People bought that and they ate that up. And I think yeah. that that's what separates PlayStation right now. You could get the single players uh, exclusive. You could get the multiplayer exclusive. You could get third parties. You could get whatever you want on a PlayStation. They've got the full the package. Get. It's really compelling. Yeah, exclusive games. It's the best place to play your third party games. It's the best console for most people to hey, play online with that. friends Xbox commercials say it's the best place to play yeah for, for, who cares but, discounting them <laughs> i'm i'm know, saying ps4 is the best god damn it beastly the, the one thing that i was shocked about the one thing everyone said is going to kill the playstation with the ps4 is the one thing no one's talking about anymore they said oh it doesn't have a 4k blu-ray player does anyone talk about that anymore does no. anyone care about that the pro they knew no, that no. it wasn't a huge feature that they could Cut down the cost by not adding it, and no one's going to talk about it. And that's exactly what happened. I'm shocked wow. about it. I was, in the beginning, I was the one that people have said, that's messed up. They should have had it. And now I'm like, wait a second. They're completely right because no one's talk about it. No one yeah. cares no one that there's no. It. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. So. Well, you were right, sir. You were nah, right. I, didn't, I was wrong. I, I was one of the people that said, what the hell? They should have had it. <laughs> oh, you weren't the 4K Blu-ray. I was like, <laughs> I was one of the guys who was like, well, I don't really do the, the, the physical stuff anymore. And I was kind of on the side that, you know, of what Sony was saying, that we're going to move into a digital utopia where yeah. you can watch 4K as a digital download. And it works for me just as well. It made my console cheaper and it kept PlayStation in the lead. So yeah. there we go. Robbie, what we got next? All right, boys, moving on right on to the next bit of news. Uh, once again... Sony Interactive Entertainment CEO John Cadera has also commented this week on a recent investor's call stating that PlayStation, as a company, is still open to experimenting with portable gaming in the future, adding that it is, quote, not yet the right stage to discuss specific hardware plans, but they will always consider it. <gasps> Boom. What do you guys think? Vita 2? So I, I, I have to maybe? explain this. Yeah, maybe. Listen, Vita listen, 2, uh, is it happening? Look, Sony's only uh, uh, positive revenue has been the PlayStation. What do you think, chat? Are we getting a Vita 2 any day? Let me know. Well, any day, I don't know. But <laughs> like, if you look at the TVs, if you look at the computers, if you Vita look 2 at ever happening. The, the Walkman, if you look at everything, Sony's kind of months in all this stuff. And uh, when it comes to video games, the PlayStation has been their dominant force. It saved the company. Now, looking at what Nintendo has done with the Nintendo Switch, a phenomenal console, Sony has a great kind of uh, platform to look at. Mm -hmm. and, and they can see the, the things that worked for Nintendo and they can see the things that didn't work for them. So they can change their plan. They have a whole new outlook on portable gaming. It's something that they've done for decades now. And I, I, I've always said that it's something that they should continue to do. Yeah. Uh, there's been a lot of talk of they're not doing it. This is really exciting news for me because also, and this is a little bit of news, I don't know if it's the same article, but they're saying that the next portable venture will also be heavily uh connected to the, the the home hardware as well yes so yeah that was part of it too yeah something very similar to the nintendo switch and i think to me that's a great idea i mean to be able to play i mean ima imagine you know the games we're playing now like god of war or, or you know like detroit and you, you got a portable console that you could take on the go and play that and similar quality 
it, it'd just be amazing. So it's exciting okay. news for me. It's exciting news for portable gamers. I asked Kate earlier today, but she play uh, on the next PlayStation Portable, and she said she's too old for that. And as she continued to play Detroit, yeah, so. and I, you got to imagine like Sony yeah. is sitting back and seeing how successful Nintendo's been with the Switch and thinking. There's got to be a way we can do this, that we can be successful at this too. So the Switch definitely is they're actually considering slated it. to yeah. outsell the Xbox One by the end of this year. What? So, I, yeah. yeah, absolutely. They're really? Going to three, wow. Three year lead, and they're about to get lapped by Nintendo. Who came That's three incredible. Years later. And it, it's funny too because yeah. Microsoft, for three or four years now, has never released any sort of. Sales numbers for the Xbox One, like we only have rough estimates of how much it's sold. Yeah, they don't want to never say to that. Yeah. See, no, I'm they, skeptical. They you are. Sorry. I say I'm skeptical of this PS this uh, PS Vita or whatever. See, here's the problem, right? Sony. You don't want to Vita too, Victor. When they competed with uh, Nintendo, they've always been one step behind, right? They came out with yeah. the PSP. Everything looked great on it. They had like this PlayStation 1 graphics, PlayStation 2 for some of them, and everything was events, right? They thought it was events. What did they miss from there? There was a big thing that they missed from the PSP that Nintendo had, which the touch, the, the, the touch, you couldn't touch anything on it. What did Nintendo come out? They came what are we touching? screens. They were able to touch, and that's it. It had touch sensitivity Hector, on it. Hector, I'm but, uncomfortable with how many times you've just said touch. <laughs> <laughs> did, oh did it make gosh. you feel a certain way? But anyway, <laughs> did you feel the way too? <laughs> hold on, hold on. That that was the one thing they didn't have. And what happened? Nintendo did something different. Everything else looked at that, and they're like, then you had cell phones. Everything else that came out afterwards with that, and they started including those things. And like they always been one step ahead with the Switch. Now, like look at the things you could do with the Switch, or even when the 3DS came out, right? When that came out, they are that we're gonna add 3D. We're gonna add something different to it. What is yeah. Sony going to do though? It's going to contribute something different. You know, well, what I mean? they're definitely not going to do 3D. But when you think about mobile technology, uh, not too nerdy, there's only so far it can go. You don't yeah. want your, your your portable console to become a cell phone because it'll become redundant. Uh, and for me, this is kind of the the precipice of what portable gaming can be in this particular state of technology. Yeah. And so as long as Sony creates something with a big enough screen, with actual controllers, with triggers, uh, with analogs. And, and they're able to support it with, with their actual first parties, with developers that aren't going to destroy ports like, you know, Black Ops Declassified and, and Oof, just horrible versions one. of games that people really, really love. I think it, it, it could work out really, really well for them. Are PlayStation exclusives, Nintendo exclusives? No. No one's going to ever say that, uh, you know, uh, Uncharted is a Mario or you know or metroid it's not it's sure. it's popular but to me there's a different pedigree in a zelda game and some of sony's you know first party exclusives but a lot of these exclusives people really really love and i think that if people have the opportunity to play them in a meaningful way on a portable console that of course at this date at this time would include those things touch a very nice resolution a comfortable uh you know form factor that's not going to destroy your hands like uh some other contraptions mm -hmm. i think they have a much better chance now especially after seeing the template nintendo's laid out to be successful in that in that venture and for us i think we all win so i mean are they going to shoot themselves in the foot again like they always do when they bring a portable console out? they always do something that shoots themselves in the foot like when they shot when they did a psp they had those little disc readers those did not work you didn't well. like the umds or the they, universal UMDs, media discs they, they, they did not work well they were unsuccessful me. and then when the ps vita came out what did they do they brought out their own memory sticks that's all you had. Two hundred dollars for sales. a gig. Yeah, you know I mean, like they they shot themselves in the foot every single time. Are they going to do it again? You know, what I mean, yeah, that's no. the thing. Like, what are they going to do to bring something different to the party? And I think that right now they spend so much money on this VR technology that if you're going to now spend money on this, you're taking a huge gamble going into a market that Nintendo owns two sides. Nintendo shooting themselves in the foot because they got a 3DS versus, 3DS or versus they got Switch. yeah. The first is a switch for the for the portable market, and now you're talking about Sony Sony going against the Switch and the 3DS. Because right. you know it's it's kind of complex to waste money on that for something that might not work. So that that's but, the problem. Because... You got you got look if you if you do a hundred million PS4s, you probably got a little bit of money to to you know put to the yeah. side for a different project. So Correct. I mean they're very successful with it, and it it is a gamble. But playing it safe, you'll never make it playing it safe. That's ubiquitous across business. Agreed. If you just yeah. if you're if you're making just five dollars extra for every transaction, 
you never get rich. You'll, God, you'll, speaking you'll, you'll of comfortable. playing safe, too, I mean, look at Nintendo with, like, the Labo and stuff. Like, that is totally crazy. Perfect example. Yeah. Don't even get me. Don't even and get me. And it's selling well. Oh, come you on. Not too early. You want a Nintendo outside. Labo. Come on. <laughs> you want one. <laughs> this is what happened, right? Let me tell you Let me just tell you guys a story. Oh, Listen boy. up for a Here second. Here we go. Right? Here we go, guys. We had a couple years ago, we had these little little toy figures, right? action figures, and, and they sold like hotcakes. People were like, oh, man, people are lining up and collecting all these, me- like, you know, all this, uh, what do they call them again? Amiibos. Uh, exactly. They, they had all these Amiibos, people lining up. We got them to buy a toy. A toy that we could print down so many times that we got them to line out. So they said, what else can we do to screw over the consumer? Cardboard. Cardboard. We have a lot of boxes left over for all those freaking Amiibos. Let's use those same boxes we use to ship the Amiibos. And so it's a whole new product. We sell them. And we're going to be like, you know what? We could print down as many as we want because people are too stupid to realize that they can get the design and cut out the freaking cardboard themselves and make it. We're, <laughs> we're going to have a cut for them. We're going to pre-cut it and that's it. They're not waterproof or anything. They'll suck it up. They'll buy it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the voice of reason. That's if the kid scary. destroys it, fuck it. They've got to buy another one. <laughs> Screw these kids. <laughs> like, you know what and, I mean? And, and, and not too dirty. It, it's selling really well. You know? I know that because people are dumb. And it's I, brilliant, <laughs> too. If the car breaks, you just got to go buy more. So there you go. I mean, look, not too <laughs> dirty. you never know, man. There was a time where people would just use their, their faucet. But, you know, somebody said, hey, let's pour it into a bottle and sell it to them. No, nah, man. I, I lost it when I saw the, the grown-ass man in a robot suit boxing like, i'm sorry when you're in a robot suit like this if i see a grown man doing that you're done i'm sorry you gotta just retire like just whatever you do just stop. <laughs> just retire Listen, quit life nerdy. quit okay, life you, look, look, don't don't judge grown men until you're in that situation i just recently saw a very muscular grown man running and jumping over a five and a half foot boulder <laughs> and missing it was fantastic father for laughter but i would never well, judge a guy who attempted it yeah just to let you guys know, I did bust my ass before jumping over a boulder, but I made it the first two <laughs> times. Throwing it out. Why did you have to do three? I made because it the first it, two times. I, I didn't like the three. angle. I didn't like the angle. Oh, I definitely didn't like the angle at the end. <laughs> let me just say, I was looking he forward to seeing you already balls. today, right? I was really looking forward to seeing you all day, like from the moment I, I got up at seven this morning. And then when you sent us that, that digital gift, uh, you know, someone was, Digital he had a good gift. cameraman too. I don't know if it was like a guy working for Marvel, but it was a great cameraman, yeah, caught the entire job. thing. And, uh, you know, if it was just in slow motion, I probably would have <laughs> fell out of my seat and died. <laughs> it was great. And, and, and I didn't judge you, you know. Sometimes grown people do things that look questionable, but you got to always ask them what's in their heart. Like using sometimes a cardboard two, robot suit. Hey, yeah, you know, I won't sometimes judge. Sometimes two isn't good enough. Yeah. No. Maybe he played the game without the robot and said, I, I did it twice without a robot. Maybe I want to try it with the robot to see what Don't happens. Don't worry, guys. For, for what they're talking about, I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna post it on my YouTube channel. Okay, I'm I'm not afraid to look like an idiot. I'll, <laughs> no, I'll edit it up and I'll, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. But there was a moment if Chat, you pause you will it, see, you will there, see. Yeah, there's a moment if you pause it, you're like you can see my face say, "Oh shit!" Yeah. Like I literally, if you paused in that moment, you saw my reaction. I knew that. I gotta make this hurt as least as I can. Right now. You did a good job because you, I mean, you somehow in the air dropped tucked and rolled. It was crazy. Yeah. But <laughs> let me tell you guys like this: if you if you ever get a chance to see it, please go to Not Too Nerdy's channel and see it. I upload it as soon as you can. You can. Yeah. Let me just paint a picture for you: Superman getting ready to take off. He's running down the road, and just when he gets ready to jump, he slips on a banana peel. That's exactly <laughs> what happened. Because he's all buff and running, looking all ready and stout, and then the banana peel, he didn't see it, and. <laughs> but it was great. It was great video. Yeah. Awesome. All right, Speaking Robbie. of Battlefield Five, that's like... <laughs> oh my Segway. god! <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. All right. Are right, you guys ready for the next bit of news? Yes, sir. Boom. Let's do it. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, good segue to Victor. <laughs> that's what we're talking about next. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but all right. So, guys, Battlefield V has been officially revealed this week, and the game will be set during World War II. It will feature the ability to build fortifications, a first for the Battlefield series, and has a larger emphasis on team play than ever before. Battlefield V will no longer have a battle pass or any paid map packs. Instead, content will be rolled out across a period of time for all players. Battlefield V will also have a single-player campaign similar to Battlefield 1's, while its main competitor... 
Call of Duty Black Ops 4 will not. I'd have a campaign. Oh my god. So is this like Fortnite with realism? Mm. I don't know. I do like Realistic the fact Fortnite? that they want everything yeah. out for free. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Having free DLC maps, not dividing the community. Uh, the fact that Call of Duty apparently also as well, Black Ops 4 won't have a season pass for its multiplayer too. Well, Big thumbs up. That's because, Robbie, I know you're, you know, from Canada over there, but in the U.S., we got to thank the U.S. government for that stuff. Because they got all right, all right, all right. ass for that with the whole Battlefront 2 thing. <laughs> that's true. After that, EA is like, we got to do something to make up for yeah, what we did. Yeah, that's what they did. Shit. So, yeah. so you guys get to benefit from the work of our you know, yeah. American government. <laughs> Thanks, America. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not really a huge Battlefield fan. I have Battlefield 1. I have Battlefield 4. Uh, I don't know... Why the hell isn't this Battlefield 2? That's another good question. Isn't that weird? Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1. Now we're back to Battlefield 5. And it's set in World War 2. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's right after World War 1. I. I just don't get the, the naming. It's like, uh, what is that? Um, they realized they fucked up, and then they just kind of had to go back. We're like, okay, Battlefield it is, 5. It is the fifth game, though. You know what I mean? Is overall. Because they had the, 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 was it 1942 Battlefield or whatever? Wasn't there, like, another... Yeah, and then well, then there was 1944, and then there was Bad Company one yeah, and two. It was made, yeah. So they've had so, yeah. crazy names. It's kind of like uh, Final Fantasy: The City of Duo of Decum, that game that came out for. Sometimes names just are out there. Don't are you make guys excited sense. about this at all? I'm looking forward to the game. Uh, I know some people. There's some controversy going around. I'm not even going to talk about that because I think that's incredibly stupid with this game. But it looks. No women in World War Two. Yeah, can't well, have, that's yeah. just embarrassing. We're not going to talk about that. But yeah, no, I mean, it looks great. It looks gorgeous. The in-engine gameplay they showed. I mean, it's going to look amazing. But it always does, Robbie. Uh, yeah, and I mean, it's Battlefield 1 basically set in World War II. I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I've never been, like you, Beastly, I've never been huge into Battlefield. I just feel like it's too much running. And you just kind of, someone snipes you from a mountain that's like five kilometers away. One second, away, Robbie. So. You said it's like, it is like it. Battlefield 1 set in Battlefield 2. In World War is that II. What you in World War Two, so it's World yeah. War One set in World War Two. That's kind of like what World War Two really was. It's like the first war. It's like it's Pandora's just box. Second. Oh my god! Dude, it's like I feel like it's like a part two of a of a <laughs> World part War. One. You know? Yeah. Fuck just, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> but Shut up. Seriously though, like I I don't know. That, so for me, I always it's almost like World War One had a Battle second World games. War. <laughs> The problem with Battlefield games is how is it going to launch? They always screw up on launch. Got a good time. Every true, single true. time, yep. every single one, there's always some weird switch. Yeah. Like, oh man, like they and the funny thing is they always have some beta where it's working, right? The beta works and then they come out with the game <laughs> and it always breaks. How does that happen? I have no idea. Like, what about that sound glitch for Battlefield 4 when it came out? Like they like sometimes you have no sound. There's been times in the beginning, yeah. like when I started, I was running around with no weapon. I couldn't pull out a weapon because my, my character had no weapon. There was that other glitch, you know, yeah. that you couldn't pick up a weapon or anything. You just run around and you couldn't that do anything. That sounds like State of Decay 2 or something. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? And like, I, I don't know. For for Battlefield 5, I, I mean... I prefer to wait. Yeah. To me, they're kind of visual set. I mean, just amazing visual set pieces. If you want to really show off your 4K TV. Oh, my God. My, my daughter just stumbled in here. I'm so sorry. It's okay. Uh, I feel like that. Go ahead and take her, Nova. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Nova wanted to come and see the camera. Oh. Go ahead and please close both of those doors. I appreciate it. For me, Battlefield has always been that game that you want to hook up to your 4K TV, show your friends, show them how the campaign looks, and stay away from the multiplayer if you know what's good for you. <laughs> it's uh, interesting what they're trying to do with Battlefield 5. I mean, they got the Battle Royale mode now, too. They well, that hasn't that, been announced. So. They didn't announce that, did I, they, Hector? I think they did. I'm, I'm pretty sure they did. That They, they really? said they're, they've been designed perfectly to do it as well. Like, I think that that's what they announced that they were doing as well. I'm almost positive. I know it was rumored. Said. I don't think wow. they actually announced it, though. I don't think they didn't officially announce it. I could have sworn they announced that. Maybe I'm wrong. Ooh, I don't know. two hosts beef. It's that's, probably that's happening. Well, it's probably happening either way. I, I wouldn't be surprised, that's right? That's why so. I was like a little upset. I'm like, is everyone going to do Battle Royale mode now? Like, is that the only thing that everyone could think of now? You know, I do another podcast with the trend. Live, and, and, and I asked that last week on the show was this uh, Battle Royale thing? here to stay and taking over and, and the uh, consensus was that it is and it's actually taking over my sons you know Robbie like you they've grown up over the last couple of years and that game thanks uh, has really taken you know the, the front stage of their existence other than graduating from school you know they, they come and tell me hey dad I just had a, a fight with Thanos it was amazing I'm like get the hell out of here you know get out of that Fortnite shit I, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. Battle Royale is a really big thing hey. right now 
Yeah, but it's not a thing it. that's new, though. Technically, I mean, they have free for all for Call of Duty for how long? I mean, it's not something that's it's, the it's, idea. It's, it's different, not, though. It's different that you drop and that's it. But like, I think the reason why Fortnite's so successful is because it's more fast paced and you build. I think if it was no building, then they, they be wouldn't a, be as popular. It'd be yeah. PUBG. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that's why it's successful because you have you could create multiple layers that you could build traps. You could do so many different things in you the do game. Anything, yeah. That's what makes it yeah. successful. You know, I think that's what separates it, but, you know. All right, so moving on. Take-Two CEO Strauss Zelnick has promised this week that Red Dead Redemption 2 will not be delayed past its current October 26th release date. And mm-hmm. The team at Rockstar Games is on track. Rockstar, I remember that company. Awesome guy I know works there. I was going to say, um, do you still work there, Hector? No. Oh, <laughs> oh dude. So I, can, I can say some stuff right now. I, I feel that the game... It's been ready, but glitchy. I mean, I'm not. I'm just oh saying. Rumor God, has it, it's ready. It's glitchy. So I'm just saying. I don't so know what it's like now. you get the skinny from your friends. I haven't. From the rumor has it that it's they're trying to fix certain things in it. That's all I know. That I haven't spoken or did anything in like a long time now. So it's been a long time. So that's all I can say right now. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. Or anything. <laughs> okay, we understand. But, you but can't like say, it's. But- can't say I know you do stuff. some bartending, and I'm sure that probably yeah, some. Yeah, I do bartending are, now. Yeah, they, they come around, mm. come around, and say, "Hey, man, you want to find out what's going on? Look at my phone." Yeah, look, I, I honestly cool. don't ask anything about that company anymore. But I, I have a feeling that it looks good now. They did fix a lot of things. It looks pretty cool, uh, the trailers wise. But they really didn't give you a full trailer yet, which leads you to believe that it's still going to be a little while, don't you think? That. Believe it or not, guys, I didn't beat Red Dead Redemption One. Uh, you know, what? for me, I'm so sorry. Oh my I god, you gotta I, go fix that right now. I'm sorry, Robbie, but the thing is, the reason I didn't is because to me it felt like GTA in yeah. in in the Wild West, and I didn't give it a chance. I have GTA Five. Yep. That was a game I beat. You know, I beat that when it first came out on PS3, um, and I thought it was fun and great and. And, but when I played Red Dead, I was like, oh, this is a more dated GTA, and I didn't give it the chance it deserved. I did like the zombie DLC. Yeah. I uh, didn't beat that either. But this looks awesome. I'm definitely going to give it give it a chance and give it a spin on the wheel and, and hopefully uh, enjoy it the way that I probably should have enjoyed the original because it has a cult following. A cult following. You know, Beastly, it, that is yeah. one of my favorite video games of all time. Red Dead Redemption, the story, the characters, the world. Honestly, I kind of disagree with you about it being GTA set in the Wild West. I just think it it stands out so much. I'm not even a Wild West guy, but like that world is amazing. And I, How do I you think know? You've never incredible. been to the Wild West. Maybe you are. Okay. <laughs> I still, okay. I mean, I, I think I agree with, uh, with Beast a little bit that it is similar. They took mechanics. It, of course from it's GTA. similar, yeah, but I think that game yeah. was so good. That's, I that, love that, that was game. My, my, my thought on it. I knew it was a different game, different story, different characters, different world, world building, but the mechanics were so similar that, you know, I played years of PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, GTAs, and, you know, I'm 38. I'm not young like you guys. Robbie, you just turned 16. And, and uh, you know, not to know you, I know you, you just hit that. 30 mark, but no, I played enough. Of yeah, a little bit off the mark, but okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> I'll let it go. But, but me, I just felt like over the years, it was more and more of the same. And I was like, I want, I wanted a different experience. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, what? it's been a while since I played a GTA and of course a Red Dead Redemption. So I'm really looking forward to experiencing this. And hopefully it's as good as a lot of people hope it is. I'm right, so curious this... to see what they did with it. To be honest, I'm curious to see what the final product looks like. I'm, I'm curious to see, Everything. Are they going to lean more towards GTA? This are they going to take what's in GTA Five and have an open world like that? Are they really going to focus on it, or is it just a rumor? If it's as big as GTA Five, and, and, and of course it probably will be, if not bigger, uh, and it has as much activity as GTA Five, and the world is that alive, I'll be mind blown. You know, it's. I mean, imagine if uh, there was a world where you could uh, rob banks together in the Ooh. Wild West. So it's going to be. I, I, mean, I want to be able to do fun. that and Listen, rob trains in uh, multiplayer. Uh, right, our friend not too nerdy is practicing yeah. major restraint. He of course has access to this information. I it's don't like, anymore. It's like, I, he's probably got a test build to Red Dead Redemption this, too. Okay? No, <laughs> It'd be like I got me, no access. me splitting up with a woman. Of course, we, we, it's a mutual agreement to, to go our separate ways. But you know, every now and then I call her and ask her what she cooked for dinner yesterday. It's that easy. 
he can call his friends and ask what they cook, but he's he's got this nature of I quite my own folks. I don't know what he's talking about, but <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I don't want to laugh before this little bit of news, and this is very solemn news because the guy is very very young, and and I'm sure a lot of you guys are heard about it. Well known YouTuber and game critic Toby Biscuit has passed away this week. John Bain, who was 33 years old, had been diagnosed with a rare form of bowel cancer in 2014. And it kind of hit me as a shock day before yesterday. Uh, my Twitter was blowing up about it. And, you know, I don't follow a lot of YouTubers or, or you know, internet personalities. But when it hit me, I was like, God, this guy's so young. And, and I remember, you know, listening to him talk about it on YouTube and how he was stepping away from it to be with his family. And it seemed like yesterday. And, and it's a horrible tragedy. I feel bad for his family. Uh, I think he has a child as well. Um, and of course, for the fans... This is a reason for everybody, all of us, to validate the people in our lives and be thankful for every moment that we have with them. It's so important to not walk away from people you love without letting them know. It's so important not to go to sleep angry uh, because you don't know if you'll wake up the following day. It's so important to just be proactive about life and appreciate every minute that God or the universe or Gaia gives us because life is short. It yeah. really is. And, you know, the older you get, you really start to appreciate it. Yeah, and things can kind of just happen really at any sad. moment, you know. You never know what's going to happen, and it's incredibly sad. I didn't really watch him too much. I knew about his content. Like, I kind of on and off would watch Total Biscuit. I never really actively watched him, though, but he seemed like a good guy. He seemed like a guy that really talked a lot about the, the kind of, like, corporate practices in the game industry and, you know, standing up for what you believe in and preaching, like, you know, we need to strike out against these companies you know and things like that but like it's really sad it's pretty awful news and uh yeah hope his family's doing well and hope everything's doing good i'm sure they're not doing well but, you know well as well as they can be like of this course been happening for, for the last four years for, he had stage four cancer yeah and it became yeah. terminal not too long ago so yeah for me that's like it's heartbreaking i used to watch him like years ago and like i saw him like i disliked everything he did in the beginning and like and for some reason, I kept going back mm -hmm. to watch him. And I realized, man, this guy will put down, like, he would get a review copy. He'll put down certain companies hardcore. Immediately. And then I realized by his honesty, by the stuff that he said made the company better. So there's companies that went back to draw on board and fixed their, their UI, the menu screen, and different features to say he'll be like, oh, like, you can't, uh, you can't adjust the settings on this PC game. And what kind of game in this year will he do was that? He was the digital this, foundry of yeah. reviews. He of will reviews. go back there and so many PC games, so many uh, indie games, so many people went back and fixed the things he said. They listened to him. He was a voice. Yeah. And, I, I didn't, and I always thought it was negativity. And I always thought at the beginning that it was all negative. Then I realized he's critiquing. He's constructive. He was strongly critiquing someone and to, to make it better, to make the gaming better. And I thought that that was great because I didn't see that back then. A lot of people were always going on the side with everyone else. They're like, oh, this game's great or this game's yeah. it. And like they never really had their own voice and really truly said what they felt. And they didn't nitpick that this is wrong, this is wrong. And I felt yeah. like he was one of the people that really started that. I think that's why he had a huge following because he always said what was on his mind. And the thing that really caught me, uh, I think it was like a couple of weeks ago, I remember seeing a tweet from him because I, I follow him and stuff. And it was a tweet from him and like he said like, he, he knew it's coming. He said, like, he said he doesn't know how much longer he has. Something like, I forgot exactly how the tweet went, but when I read that, I was like, whoa. And yeah. randomly, I, I don't know how or why, I, I randomly came across it on, like, uh, like a news media. It was there, and, and it said that he passed away. And the crazy thing about this is, this is how big that he got. It was, like, on all media. It was on CNN, Fox yeah. News. Like, every news media announced it. I heard about it, it on just, Fox News, yeah. Yeah, which is, like, wow. That's like, crazy, you, yeah. That's something, that's how big YouTube has become, that, like, these people are, are bigger than just, you know, a small screen. Yeah, they're mainstream, be, yeah. yeah. They're very yeah. popular. So I thought that was very impressive, you know. You know, rest in peace, and I hope his family and everything are okay and uh, or get better. You know, he was someone that will be missed for people. 33 years old, man. That's... 33 that's i mean i feel like you're just getting started at that age and it's an unfortunate thing uh yeah. but but god bless him and 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 our thoughts and prayers are with everyone who's been affected by it of course we don't know him personally or his family but that's something we can all get behind uh and and wish them all the yeah. best best of luck to his family yep okay so the next little bit of news currently there are no plans to bring call of duty black ops 4 
to the Switch. That's why I bought the Switch. It's, well, to I'm sorry, Beastly. I guess you're going to be a little disappointed now. Right, it's going to be a hole in your heart. Well, no Call of Duty on the Switch. A little hole in your Get heart. Get used to it, people. A lot of these games are going to the Switch like that. I know it's it's selling, but these games are, are, are not I'm sorry. They're not going to do it because they have to create a different style of play. And I think part of the reason, too, is I think one thing is killing them is they, they don't have online play yet. And the multiplayer, and even they're going to have it before Call of Duty comes out, I believe. That's when it's set to come out in September, right? Mm -hmm. The call uh, of the the online, online infrastructure. Yeah. It's in September, and Call of Duty comes out oh, yeah. afterwards. Yeah. But the thing is, they still don't have a a way for you to the voice chat and all that. You still got to use a phone app. It's it's that is it's such kinda, a mess. Why just use a phone? Why yeah. use a phone app? It, it's kind of <laughs> weird, and <laughs> I, I think that. They just don't think that it's going to sell as well because the people, the more hardcore people are going to play on like a console like P, you know, PS4 or Xbox. And that's just the way it is. Because, it's probably just too well, difficult with, to with port Nintendo, it. Very yeah. few people have ever really saw Nintendo consoles. Even, you know, the Wii U, or the, you know, they, they've never seen them as a, a tangible means to play online games. Uh, when, when the, I want to say when the Wii U was fairly popular or not, I don't think it was ever fairly popular. I'm being unfair by saying that. Well, we all bought uh, Super Smash Brothers or Smash Brothers for the for the Wii U. Yeah. Uh, we actually played that game together, but we all co we communicated through PlayStation. Everybody put their PS4 headsets on, and we created a, a group a party and played through there. So nobody, I don't think many people who play Nintendo games play it for that infrastructure, and that might be an issue. But what Nintendo could do to change this around when they release their uh, online infrastructure in quotations. Mm -hmm. Is release at this on the same day, release Fortnite. They did that, it would change yeah. the whole dynamic. Everybody would be on the Switch, everybody would be playing together, and it would kind of breed a whole new atmosphere into what Nintendo has been missing and give people an opportunity to see that it works. If they're serious about this thing actually working, there's no better way for them to do that than to release something like Fortnite, a game that's free, that everybody who has a Switch has access to, that you don't have to pay to play online with and that everybody loves besides me i'm too old for fortnite but i think that would be a really good move and it's unfortunate uh the last call of duty that was on nintendo uh hardware was black ops 2 mm. for the wii u uh and i don't know how well that did but i'm not surprised by this but you'd be surprised uh not to know how many great games are coming to the switch but you're about to say something go ahead go ahead i was just gonna pretty much all i was gonna say is that the game itself, I, I don't think will just do well on the Switch. Now, they could easily, you know, here's the thing. They still have time to port it over. They might port it over when online play comes later. You don't know. The problem is, I'm thinking if this Battle Royale mode in Call of Duty is successful, which I don't think it will be, but if it is successful, <laughs> um, then maybe they might port it over because now you're given a reason for people to play it on the go. But let's just bring that up for a second. It's not going to be successful. They can't even get 12 players on a screen without it locking up a freezing. How in the hell are they even get that many people on a screen for Battle Royale? Please, someone explain to me. You imagine, yeah, Blackout on the Switch. Worked. That would be... They, even, they haven't had 64 players yet in Call of Duty. What are they thinking that they're going to put these this many players on one screen and do Battle Royale? What? what? They're like, oh, our system's yeah, been built for this. No one has ever been able to do it like Call of Duty can. It's because it's not going to be laggy as shit like Call of Duty is going to be. It's going to be laggy as... It's going to be laggy. I'm sorry to curse, but it's going to be laggy. That's the only thing I'm worried about, that it's not going to work on there because of the lag that they have their servers. Yeah, and Spiking. I mean, people are even wondering, too, like how Battle Royale is going to work on PS4 and Xbox One if they can run it that well. And then that, let alone Switch, like, I highly doubt yeah. that, you know? Like, that is very unlikely. I mean, it I all depends, I guess, on the engine, too. You know, yeah. PUBG, look at PUBG on the Xbox. It runs like crap. It's like Minecraft with guns. And, and then when you look at Fortnite on every console, it runs like, it runs on my Samsung Galaxy S9. You know, it runs on your it runs phone. Like a dream. Yeah, yeah. That's because I mean, they, they chose that uh, cartoonish style, which actually came out to be a smart play. They weren't going for realism. Super smart. That, yeah. It made it easier for them to uh, make it a little bit faster and stuff like that. Boy. So they, that was really smart in the end because people laughed in the beginning, remember? They said mm -hmm. it was too cartoonish. And, like, everyone right. was saying that, um, oh, like, the the other one, Battlegrounds, is going to be it's gonna be better. You know, that everyone said that's the one it is. And all of a sudden it switched because the building aspect, I think, switched. Not too shh, shh, my sons are watching this. I don't want you to let them know they were right. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> I can't feed the ego. <laughs> they were telling me, they said, there's a dad. 
I don't know why you're playing, but and my sons, their voices are deeper than mine. Every time I say that, I need to grab my balls. But they told me, they said, Dad, uh, Fortnite's better than, than PUBG. I'm like, shut up. I just bought this on my Xbox. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm playing on Xbox. I'm playing on PC. I'm having, you know, a good time. My son, my older son, 17, Dad, come play Fortnite. It's a better game. And then when you look, it's ubiquitous across the gaming ethos. Fortnite is a better game. It's much more popular. People really, really love it. And, I, I you know, I said it before. I'll say it again. I agree with you. Uh, not too nerdy. It's all because of the ability to change the dynamic of the way you play. It's yeah, really DJ nice. as well is saying Fortnite much better than PUBG on console, which I agree. I haven't played oh, either of them on console, but <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, to my chat real quick, if you guys want to chime in on any subject, any piece of news we're talking about, feel free to do that. We would love to have a bit of a discussion with you guys as well. So, so DJ was shy. first. Speak up. Wasn't the, wasn't the best character in Street Fighter, but I love you on Twitch. All right, so <laughs> well here we go. Well said. We're talking about the Switch. We're talking about ports. Resident Evil 7, good game. I played on PSVR. Mm -hmm. Has been officially announced as coming to the Nintendo Switch this week. But there is a catch. The game will pl uh, be playable only via Capcom's cloud servers. And the game is, for now, only available in Japan. Got to dumb it, Japan! How could they do this? Dude, uh, but that's, that's horrible. Horrible. News. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> horrible. You know, uh, that's a game that you would imagine the Switch could, could run. It's probably, in my mind, the only reason I'm thinking that they're having these limitations is because of the file size. I think the game might be too big to put on one of these hokey-dokey little cartridges. Uh, I, I believe there's already been games that have been released that are only available for download because they won't fit on these cartridges. Um, and on a, on a server? On a, how would you even pay for that? I mean, of course it's only Japan, but... What do you do? You pay for a full-fledged game and you only have access to it when you connect it online? It just doesn't make a lot of sense for me. If I remember correctly, it's a $20 purchase. The $20 purchase is only for 180 days, by the way. If anyone, if you look at it, you don't even get to keep it. It only lasts for 180 days. So I, I need someone to confirm that. But that's what the rumor has it as. Only, it's $20 is only for 180 days on the server and that's it. And that's like street paying for next Netflix for six months, but you only get one movie. You're streaming it too, so it's it's exactly like PlayStation Ooh, Now. Yeah, it's not even weird. it's not even like you're downloading. You're streaming the game using. What if their you're streaming service. it from a PlayStation? <laughs> like, yeah, I just don't see any way this can be good. Like, oh, I, I don't oh, know, man. man. I just they, don't they think gotta, internet connections are good enough this day and age for cloud no, servers to no be a way, thing. No way, PlayStation uh, Now sucks. Xbox Game Pass is amazing. If I played my X, I do. I have Game Pass. I actually downloaded um, uh, State of Decay 2, but it's so buggy. I didn't even want to start it. Me as well. It. It's but a fun game, but it is, yeah, kind of buggy. It, I, I mean, until they fixed that, I love State of Decay 1. That was one of the first Xbox One games I bought. But Game Pass is amazing. If you don't have it, you need to have it. It's probably, I would say, the only reason to have an Xbox right now. Because mm -hmm. all the exclusives are on there. You pay $10 yeah. a month. It's unbelievable. You get Gears of War. You get uh, Orient of Blind Forest. You get uh, Sea of Thieves. You get day and date release games of, you know, xbox exclusives yeah for ten dollars a month uh but the way that game pass does it compared to the streaming services like playstation now or what nintendo is dreaming about here with this resident evil 7 news is that you don't have to stream to your console you actually get to download the entire game digitally to your console to your hard drive and you play the full-fledged experience and that's the only way to go for me so uh yeah nintendo's got it wrong playstation has got it way wrong xbox is the only one in my opinion and that that regard who has the situation correct yeah the cloud think, streaming thing is just yeah. such a long ways off still i just i've tried playstation now when kind of when it first came out and it's just it's not as good as backwards compatibility it's never going to be as good as playing just a local game right. so but i think you're right though obviously that uh xbox has it right the only problem is developers they're closed they're going to close studios but they can't afford it look at sea of thieves all the sales that people are playing. You know how many people Pinnacle. got Sea yeah. of Thieves for a Game Pass and they cancel it when they're done? Hundreds, like, yeah. That, Tons. That's what I'm saying. That's, you're going to have developers that are not going to last because they're not purchasing the full game. It's one thing if everyone's on this Game Pass. But so many people yeah. are not. Why? Because there's no games to support the Game Pass. Well, like, check it out. Not, all all transparency for me, okay? I was at work uh, Friday, yesterday. And mm -hmm. I canceled my Game Pass subscription. It ends on the 6th of next month, so I technically still yeah. have it. I had it for three months. Uh, I got it for Sea of Thieves. You know, yeah. I didn't really need the, the backwards compatibility. I got modded PlayStation 3s all over my house. But um, 
I got it for Sea of Thieves, and when I got it, I was able to see all these first-party games that you know I didn't have, like Ultimate Editions of Gears of War and stuff like that. I wanted to try. Plus, yeah. you could you can actually play it on your PC as well. But I'm, I haven't been playing it. I use my Xbox primarily, and I swear to God, I'm not lying for for YouTube and Netflix at nighttime when I'm laying in bed with my girl. That's it. So I'm like, I'm paying for this stuff. I haven't played Sea of Thieves, Sea of Thieves in what uh, six weeks? You know, I'm, it's been a long time. I probably played two or three maybe hours of the entire yeah, game. Like, I'm, I'm probably... Paying, I'm paying for this and I'm not using it. What's the point of continuing to pay? Well, yeah. How much do you pay, basically? How many how many months do you go to? I paid three months. And how much three. is that? $30. And you still didn't pay for full price to see these. This is what I'm talking about. Like, even if you had for three months, didn't use it, and you stopped. You still didn't even buy one game and you got access to all these and other games. And I got, games. like, let me see. I, if I go in here, I'm on my computer. I got all these Xbox games I downloaded through Game Pass to my <laughs> PC. And that makes it like, why would I even use my Xbox if I, if I really had a need? I'll be playing on my PC. It's going exactly. to kill people. It's going to kill developers because they're not getting the money. You're giving people a free trial for a game, and they, they if they don't like it, they get they get to cancel, and that's it. It's there's ten dollars. Yes, that's consumer friendly. You can't be that consumer friendly when you're not when you're not gonna sell copies. You can't do that. It's not yeah. a sustainable and, practice. Yeah, yeah. until you, like um, see if, not see if these, but uh, State of Decay two, that was the only game that uh, Microsoft had mentioned in the past few months that I was actually really excited for. State of Decay 1 was really up my alley. I love zombies. I love the way that State of Decay 1 was crafted, and I like the Xbox One version. I never played it on 360. So I was like, ooh, I'm really looking forward to this next one. They showed trailers for it. I was like, oh, fucking awesome. I'm buying this game. And then when it came out on Game Pass, it's like, okay, I have it on my Xbox, but I feel like it was just a kind of a give me. So I, even till the 6th of next month, I got all this time to play it. And then I'll know if I really want it. And to be totally honest, if I play it and I beat it, if I need to beat it, I can just pay ten bucks and, and just take another month. To play exactly, it and, and, and so for all the exclusives really too. Themselves. And for all the exclusives killing. too, you know what I mean? It's like when Halo Six comes out, when Gears of War yeah. Five comes out, when any Microsoft exclusive comes out, Crackdown Three, you know, buy Game Pass, play those games as long as you want, and then you can cancel it's if you cool. want. It's way cheaper what? in the long run, and it makes so much sense. They it makes sense for us, but it's not a sustainable practice for them. It's going to but kill they them. did leave well, it open. They didn't. They didn't say all exclusives though. That's what they they left it open when they said it originally. They didn't say all exclusives. Hold have on, to be hold on, on hold on. And then there's yeah. also the thing we haven't mentioned too is that we don't know how much of a cut like developers get for maybe how much their game yeah. is downloaded through Game Pass. Like there's that too. We don't know all that. Like they must well, receive something. You know. Ultimately, uh, Microsoft is pardon my French, fucking himself here. Because uh, so many yeah. so many gamers would be buying these games day one. I mean, they're fans of some of these franchises. So many people would have bought Sea of Thieves just based on the beta. They're just future-proofing is what, you know, Game Pass is for now, basically. They're but, thinking of it as a service going forward. Do you, do you not see, though, what on the Xbox side, on the Xbox side alone, is increasing lately? Have you seen more that you haven't seen too much in consoles? You're seeing it way more on the Xbox side than PS4. The one thing you're seeing is microtransactions. Why do you think there's more microtransactions? They're trying to get their money, that money in a different way. Of course. And that's why it's a, a business. lot of them. But that's what I'm saying, though. That's the danger of giving the game free, like, or giving it it's such not, a low price. Guaranteed. They're going to find pr ways to charge you other ways. And that's exactly when you get to a little dangerous grounds. You're like, man, I got to spend all this money on everything else now. And that's why I was telling you for when we were talking about Resident Evil 7, the cloud version, like it's only for a limited of time. I think it's 180 days. That, that's how long you keep it for. You're not even paying Oof, for a full game. Yeah, that's and you're weird. streaming it. That's kind of, this is weird. I mean, it's only $20, it but at the same time, it's still weird. Like it's still yeah. a weird practice to do that. And that's yeah. why I don't think it's going to make it out of Japan because no one's going to accept that over yeah. here. And Rums makes so. a good point though. Sea of Thieves is getting new content next week. And Rums, my dude, we are definitely going to be playing that next week. But yeah, Sea of Thieves is a game that I think pretty much everyone I knew just did like the two week game pass trial. Like I know one person that bought it. I bought it full price just because I want to stream it in the future when new content comes out. Uh, other than that, I that? wouldn't have bought it though. So you yeah. said when new content, when does Xbox new content, I, those words don't even make sense. Okay, so now what? we're going to jump at Xbox and new content. Oh, like an <laughs> okay, good joke, Beastly. <laughs> uh, so we're all going right. to jump into really what the meaning of today's reunion was all about. We're going to talk about E3 a little bit and, and talk about kind of the stuff that we know is coming and maybe throw a few of our hopes, dreams, and aspirations out there for what uh, these conferences will hold. Now, uh, we've kind of got our own little notes 
but Robbie, this is your show, so you can run things the way you want. Uh, hopefully, we can go through maybe the uh, smaller uh, companies first before we hit Sony and, and Xbox. So you can kind of run the gamut. Tell us what you think, and then we can kind of chime in and, and see where we go from there. Absolutely. I have a list of uh, confirmed games for E3 written down. It's an IGN article. But first, I think we should get into E3 predictions straight away. We're going to start with third parties. I think we'll probably start with EA first, then Ubisoft, <gasps> uh, then Bethesda, and then Microsoft, Sony, S Nintendo. So I'll kind of Don't you forget Square. Square Enix is important. I might have forgotten to include them. <laughs> I'm sorry, <Okay>. Beastly. <laughs> Whoops. Thank you. You can tell us your predictions, though, Beastly. I don't have any for Square, but yeah. I got some. Shit. Uh, well, we're starting with EA, right? So for me, EA, the only stuff that we really know about, other than the sports, because I know that some people only feel that you can play sports Just, just wait. Games. Just wait. <laughs> just, all right. For me, of course, Battlefield Five news. They're going to really flesh that out. Mm -hmm. I want. I want to see what they're going to do with Anthem. Uh, I think Anthem has the capability, the the prospect of being something really revolutionary, uh, changing the way that we play these particular types of games, Destiny. Uh, and and I think that it, it looks incredible as far as what we saw in the past. Who knows how close it will be to what we saw in the past? But any news about Anthem, I think, is going to be really exciting for for the fans out there. And for me, as far as EA, those are the only things that are really noteworthy for me. Of course, uh, there's a, the possibility of some Mass Effect news, whether it be some DLC for the shitty last game, or possibly right. uh, s something new in the future. So for me, that would probably be my, my guess. A possible Mass Effect spinoff, sequel, pre prequel, something. Not an Andromeda 2. I, I don't think that's ever ah, happening. We want characters to look attractive again. Miranda! Mass Effect 2. It was <laughs> best ass ever. I mean, come on. Well, even Eden, all right. I think there's bigger Eden. problems than that, but yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Uh, do you have like an actual, any actual predictions, Beastly? Like as far as like actual written stuff you want to see happen or you thought of happening? Sure, but like I said, EA. EA, like true. I don't have many for them either. So Sports and I, Battlefield, so. All right, we'll kind of uh, go one by one. So Hector, what, I, are your, what is your I first predict prediction? For e well, for EA One prediction, I'm just saying, I'll go EA then real quick. I predict yep. that EA is not going to have any microtransaction anthem. I feel like they have Really? It. You and think so? I feel like they're not going to have any microtransactions. I think they're, 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 they're too scared right now. And I have a feeling that they went back to drawing board and took it out after Battlefront 2. I almost guarantee you that game had out the ass microtransactions. And they had to probably redesign it. I almost guarantee they redesigned it because they're afraid of what Thank happened. Thank you, government. Backlash. I think they're afraid of the backlash, right? Just right now. Don't get used to it. It's because a bad he always, time. He always for, finds for a way to screw over a consumer eventually. <laughs> so I mean, give them honestly, time. Honestly, you know, EA Activision, they've been like the Harvey Weinstein of, of microtransactions yeah. uh, for gamers uh, recently. Yeah. And too, that's too, rough. Too soon. <laughs> it's true. I mean, look, look, they're changing their tune. And yeah. uh, I love you too, Barb. Thank you for, for my curiosity. <laughs> But uh, I think it's a good time. For me, like, Me Too is a similar term to, like, microtransactions. It's something people are afraid of. <laughs> it, it, it really is true. In, in the gaming hey, world, microtransactions are a very, very dirty word. And uh, for me, I like to pay for my product initially, yeah. and that be it. You remember the old days, uh, uh, not too nerdy. You're almost as old as me. You remember when we bought a game and that was it? Now you buy a game and then you got four people to hit you on the, you know, outside the door of the GameStop and say, "Hey, you want to buy a new coat? Hey, I got this bounty bought for you. It all goes to your game. It's like two payments of twelve ninety nine. I mean, it's microtransactions. <laughs> Pretty are, much, yeah. You know, they, they've become kind of a, a suspect thing, and unless it's something that in a game and in a world that you really appreciate, you really want to see more of, it's become kind of a nuisance. So I'm actually, if that happens for Anthem, I'm, I'll be really, really happy to see yep. that. Uh, I think they, I predict them doing that. I mean, I don't think overall microtransactions are a horrible thing because they need to make their money. We're still paying $60, even though inflation changed, we're still paying $60 for games. And you got to keep in mind, this games cost way more than they used to cost to make a game with all the acting, with all the, the, the graphics and everything. It's oh, completely. Way more Standard game prices need to go up. They need to. Yeah, so saying, and it, I mean, I think they need to go up only if they guarantee there's no microtransaction. If you could guarantee there's no other, it has to be more than that. that that's the same. Though. Hmm. It would have it to be, to be. I say eighty dollars, which sucks. Yeah, well, I hate well, it, but well, it would I'm have not talking to be. about the price. Some games would be worth eighty dollars. Yeah. Others would not. And I don't think it's if a if a de developer says, "Hey, we're not going to do microtransactions. Seventy nine ninety nine for our product is a good enough argument." 
I think if a, if a developer has developed a pedigree, say uh, CD Projekt Red, their new game coming out, I'd gladly pay 80 bucks because I know their pedigree. I know what they create. And I know there'll be enough content to validate that price. Yeah. You know, say for instance, they make uh, the order 1886 too. 80 bucks? Hell no. You want your money's worth and i understand inflation i understand it's, it's harder but you know there's still also a ton of money being made on these games if a development mm -hmm. developer makes a game and that game is a good product you, you see what happens the game takes off word of, mouth, yeah. word of mouth and reviews reward hard work you know if mm -hmm. a developer comes out and they're the only person who believes in their product they release it to the public and it's crap they can't say well we should have charged more no you should have made a better game you would have sold more right so it's you know it's a it's a it's kind of a dual-sided argument. I understand it. Yeah. I'm happy that the inflation argument isn't everywhere because, you know, imagine how much a Big Mac would cost. You know, I mean, so, you know, hopefully, you know, at some point mm -hmm. these developers kind of figure out where they want to go with this. If they do decide to change prices, they have to prove to us that they're worth that extra money. If you buy, if you buy a game that's 10 hours long and you paid 80 bucks, you might feel duped. Right. You know, if you, if you, buy, if you buy a game that has replayability, it, okay. it has tons of things that you can do and it's a quality product i wouldn't mind paying a hundred bucks so it has to be you know certain things that developers are able to do to secure that kind of payment for me i agree and, and i think um i think just standard game prices have to increase because it's clear that developers do not make enough money just straight up with a 60 dollar game that's why you see season passes microtransactions like something needs to change i agree uh all right can i get to my e3 predictions as well for EA. No, Wait, is it predictions for you. anything? Oh, for thanks, anything? Beastly. All right, fine. Was this for anything <laughs> predictions, or was it just EA, I thought? No, this is just EA. Is what? it? We're still talking to you. Oh, okay. That's why. Okay, prediction for EA. Okay, go. Continue. Yeah. Sorry. All right. I'm gonna. I'm just going to run through them, them both, because I don't have much for EA either. So my first prediction was that Respawn's long and development Star Wars project will be announced. Uh, it will be a third-person <laughs> action game set for release in 2020, because I think Titanfall 3, I think that's probably coming next fall. And I don't see them releasing, you know, both games at the same time, so I think it'll be a 2020 game. And I think they will even say they expect it to come, like, fiscal year 2020 or 2021, whatever. And then, second prediction, EA will talk about sports games for such a long time that people will get bored and walk out of the conference. There you go. That's cleats. my prediction. <laughs> they leave footprints on the football. How likely is it? Probably pretty likely. <laughs> All right, so moving on to Ubisoft. Yep. Ubisoft. All right, Beastly, go ahead. What's your first prediction for Ubisoft? Well, there's been a lot of speculation about a new Splinter Cell. As someone who never really cared about mm -hmm. Splinter Cell and Sam Fisher, because I'm more of a solid Snake guy. Snake! Right, uh, right, right. Now that Snake has fallen to the wayside uh, under the crushing weight of a diabolical Konami, a Konami uh, I think right now would be a great time to bring out Sam Fisher in a new world, a new environment, a new engine, and uh, bring back stealth action. And uh, If they did that, I'd actually be excited about it. Uh, let me see. All right, Hector. They're, you... they're talking about Beyond Good and Evil too, and and to me, I never played Beyond Good and Evil. I saw the reveal trailer. What was it released last year? It looked like it. It yeah. might be. Look like it might be fun. I don't know what to expect, so but I know that's probably a big deal to a lot of people who play. Uh, those kind of games. We're doing one prediction at a time, like we're cycling through. Well, thanks for letting me know. I, well, I was trying to tell you before, but yeah. Okay. I don't like being interrupted. All right, one at a time. So, Hector, you can go next. What's your first I prediction? I believe the Division 2 is going to be... Uh, I have a feeling that they're going to involve even more for like the way that you connect with friends. I think they're going to incorporate okay, and make what it ways? what people thought. What was that? Ooh. In what ways? I think because before what happened was, right, the way you connect in like little groups and like there was people that went rogue. And I think it, it was just the way you communicated with people. I have a feeling they're going to do just try to do something different to you actually to be in like a world. Like I think yeah. they want you to be in a world this time because that's what they planned on doing before. And it's, it wasn't – it was like that, but it kind of wasn't. And it was the connectivity-wise. It's kind of weird at times. But I feel like they're really going to take what they had and they're going to add Build more to that. Build a feature of it, and I I think um, they're gonna take a zone like you saw how Anthem was, like the way that that that's going towards. I feel like they're gonna try to take stuff from that and do their own thing, and actually have a, the way you connect with friends a little bit different. And plus, they have other guidelines like Destiny, like other places where you do like the same thing, make it an experience with your friends. I think they're gonna push that more in this game right. than they did before. Do you think so, that the enemies will still be bullet sponges? 
I know. I think that they're gonna they're gonna help with the, the UI because before you gotta keep in mind, enemies were like ridiculous. They're either really really good or really really bad, and it, just, it, it was, was all UI. In between. It, There's a know. guy named Twan down there. You got to shoot him 200 times. Right? That game, it, it was true. Some enemies in that game just take so many shots. It was crazy. Yeah, it's yeah. like they had like super armor. It was ridiculous. They had, they had, yeah. they had, on, they had triple fat gooses on. They had, <laughs> they, they had thick feather coats. And I don't know what it was at Mantium Feathers, but I mean, that became super redundant. I had a lot of fun playing with Kate, but uh, it was not. And she mentioned that to me day before yesterday. She said that the division, she wanted it to be so incredible. And upon playing it and experiencing it and beating it, she just yeah. felt super let down. Yeah. So I think you're right. I think you're right, not to know. I think that when this comes out, they're going to try to right all the wrongs of the past and give yeah. us real bullets this time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I also have a prediction as well for Division 2. I think they will incorporate a Battle Royale mode because that is the hot thing. Obviously, Activision has a Battle Royale mode. Royale mode now with Call of Duty. Uh, Ubisoft would make sense. Division 2 has one. EA, they'll probably do it for Battlefield. So, yeah. And we know Division 2 is coming out before or by March 2019. So we'll probably get that at the conference. But, yeah. How, how will that work, you think, Robbie? How hmm. would that work for Battle, like, what, Battle Royale? Like, how will that work for that game, though? How well, they had think? sort of a survival mode, I remember, with the first Division. They had sort of like a dlc thing so i think basically you'll spawn yeah. in with a pistol it'll be a map of you know 100 players you'll spawn in with a pistol you have to find like better loot and stuff like that like search containers and it'll Run probably be a pretty building. simple Run yeah sky and then it'll be very similar to the survival mode like there will be like fires they you have to go to build that, Robbie. i mean that's that's a great it idea makes so much it, sense for that game it really does like even it, with the engine yeah. that was crafted in, in the first game they could have done that because these buildings tons of them you could go into multiple stories you could find stuff everywhere so yeah and they already kind of did it again with the survival mode. Like there was like these campfires, so you don't get too cold. Like that makes a lot of sense. You know, it would be really cool. So yeah. Uh, another thing from Ubisoft that I think we're going to see. I'm thinking we're going to see Rainbow Six Siege too. Really? Uh, yeah. That would be cool. Uh, that would be cool. Well, I mean, the game Here's is what, two and a half years old now. It's it's it, it's it's getting getting old. Yeah. And but it still has a very very feverish audience. People love the game. Uh, I I didn't really get into it because my my best friend and my player mate never really got into it so i mm. played other things but the times i did play it i thought it had a oh, lot boy. that you know that you could do and and uh, I'm, I'm excited to see you know potentially what they could do in the future to make it more like the original trailers that we saw in rainbow i mean in siege one yeah. it made it seem more dynamic and and, and more fun and right. when you got the game of course it was turned back because it is a ubisoft game so whatever we see at e3 just understand you deduct 30 percent of the graphics and 20% of the, the gameplay. Yeah, gonna there will probably be a downgrade. Back. Good point. That's, that would be a good prediction. prediction. Downgrade, yeah. I predict we're going to have a, a, a guy on stage that no one understands what the heck he's saying. There's <laughs> only every year. <laughs> yeah, There's someone up that's there. That's a good and one. Just like, try to follow, like, what did he just say? Yeah. Oh, we'll just, we'll just look at the video. We'll wait for the video. <laughs> they normally have that, don't they normally have that comedian chick? Uh, they, do they, they always, think, yeah. I they always have some celebrity yeah, yeah. at first, but then that actually when one of like the top people come out, I never understand what they're saying. I'm sorry, I never understand. I'm just like, what was he speaking? <laughs> but let's see. Hey. Let me just say this real quick. Ubisoft, they make the best worlds to me, right? Their worlds are just amazing, and and they breathe yep. so much into yeah. them. But I would like to see them go in a different direction. So if I were to like have a wild card that I'd like to see them do, I'd like to see them try and survive a horror. I would like to see Ubisoft go down that path to create something that's truly terrifying and a bell with a controller um, and, and do something different because the world's they, are really, really awesome. Didn't they do that with uh, Wii U? The, what was that game that they Zombie did? Zombie U. That? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Zombie U. That's a cool no, game. that's... Ah. That wasn't that Ubisoft? It was. It, I thought yeah, it was yeah, a good it was, game. It was, it was, it was Ubisoft. Um, that's the same. To me, that wasn't survival horror. That was just... Crappy zombies. Oh, but... so you're just hating. Stop it. Yeah, Stop the it hate. It really kind of was survival horror. You yeah, to survive it was. The... It totally you was. You have to survive playing the Wii U. I mean, that shit survival right there. <laughs> I, got it, I got it on PS4, too. It was a PlayStation Plus game a few months yeah. ago. But I would like, you know, I want to see something that's self-contained. It's not a cliche that that is just original and, and 
you know, because to me, they, they do really good world building in their games. They they flesh out, you know, the environment, yeah. the characters, and the story. And I think if they took some of that ingenuity and imagination and put it into crafting something meaningful, something original, something that nobody else is doing, and created something truly terrifying, it'd be awesome. Mm. You know, I see the potential there. and They never really use it in that direction. It's usually for shooters and, and, and things of that nature. Um, and I'd, I'd like to see it go in a different direction. Yeah. DJ said in the chat uh, he'd like to see Child of Light 2 announced from Ubisoft. I've never played Ooh, the first yeah. game, but I heard wonderful things about it. Uh, and yeah, for I have another prediction as well. Um, this is kind of like a two-part prediction. I kind of just put it together. The rumored new Splinter Cell game will be announced for release this fall, but the next Assassin's Creed game that's been rumored will not be announced or mentioned. That is going to end up being a 2019 game. So kind of a two-parter. Hopefully. Put them together, but yeah. I think well, yeah. Assassin's Creed games are on the what a two-year de development yeah. cycle yeah. now, right? I so, don't like it, even though that Walmart Canada thing said it was coming this year, probably or whatever. I think Assassin's Creed is next year. Splinter Cell will be this fall. That's my Walmart production. Canada. You guys have WalMarts? Okay, so we're going to move on. <laughs> yes, to we do. Wait, Bethesda. so you're saying you're saying a new Splinter Cell game? They're not gonna have like a Splinter Cell HD remix first. That you don't think they're gonna release something? No, HD no, no, first no, no, before? no, no, no. It's gonna just oh, be a bad. reboot, brand new game. Oh. I have a feeling they might they might throw that out to everyone first and then they'll announce that some other yeah. time for a new game. That'll kind of suck though. That yeah. I don't know. We'll see. You guys <laughs> have any other Ubisoft predictions? No. Uh, I would like to see maybe the remakes as well because uh, I never played the originals. Yeah, I mean the only one I had left for Ubisoft was that Ubisoft Montreal announces a big new AAA IP at the end of the conference, which they've done a lot of times. So yeah, duh. But yeah, uh, yeah, we can move on to Bethesda. Pizza Gamer, take it away. What is your first prediction for Bethesda's conference? Well, we already know we're going to see that. I want to see, my prediction is we'll, we'll see a new Elder Scrolls game. Oh, you think so? It's been long enough. Oh, it's really, man. I don't it's know. hit my heart. I don't know. You know, I got, I bought Elder Scrolls, I bought Skyrim on everything. I got it on the Switch. I got it on my microwave. I got it on the PlayStation VR. I, got, I want to see something new. You know, Fallout 4 came How out. How is Skyrim on the microwave? It's awesome. It gets Does hot. it run good? <laughs> it's hot. Yeah. Makes sense. But uh, I, you know, they usually run what a three or four year cycle, uh, production cycle on those types of games. And I think Fallout 4 came out, what, was it 2016, 2015? Maybe 2016. Mm -hmm. I want to say 16. I think that by now they could probably announce something um, to yeah. let us know that it's coming down the pipeline and, and to move the Elder Scrolls series in a new direction. Of course, people are still having tons of fun playing Elder Scrolls online, but I want to contain single player experience. Uh, or possibly something that we could play, you know, multiplayer, Fallout style, uh, not Fallout style, Far Cry style with two mm. or three friends. Yeah. Get, imagine that, you know, it's not the online game, but it's a fully contained, you know, kind of experience a la uh, Elder Scrolls Skyrim or, you know, Oblivion that you can play with your friends and everybody's kind of developing their own characters and, and going their own paths and going to do certain things. And maybe you got to, you know, get together and team up to take down harder enemies. I yep. think it'd be awesome if they announced something new for Elder Scrolls. To me, that would be amazing. That would be dope. All right, Hector, what you got? Honestly, I, f I feel like they're going to come out of Fallout 5. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Boom. Um, yeah. I really don't have one for Bethesda. Like, I agree with you saying that, that I feel like they're going to release a new Elder Scrolls. Um, I, I feel like that's why they kept showing the, the Skyrim. They redid that Skyrim, and they added to, you know, the Switch. It's really awesome they, on they, here, too. Yeah. It's really awesome. I think that's the reason why they did that. They were working on it, and they were testing it out to see if it can handle something. So I think that was pretty much showing that they're going to do it. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a, sequ a direct sequel to Skyrim, or is it going to be another portion, like another Elder Scroll? That's why I'm kind of curious. Are they mm -hmm. going to just do like, oh, the second part of Skyrim, or is it going to really just be Elder Scrolls, you know, another part of Elder Scrolls in general? DJ and says he wants like Fallout Battle Royale. Yeah, Battle absolutely going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would not be totally. surprised at that. That's funny. That would be a hell of an announcement. Just like, there you go, Fallout Battle Royale. <laughs> that, would be, that would be interesting. That would be cool. That could be cool. But how would that work? Like, just it's kidding. That Fallout that 4 game really was a Fallout 4. It's 3.5. This is well, Fallout. Fallout 3. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Fallout 5 would be Fallout 4. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that's how Bethesda's doing things these days. <laughs> Robbie, what are you thinking about All Bethesda? All right. Bethesda Game Studios' long-rumored unannounced title, known as Starfield, I'm sure you guys are familiar with this trademark, will be announced, and it will release this fall. Both the trailer and gameplay will be shown. 
What do you think? That's exciting and, and very confusing news. I know what a star <laughs> looks like, and I do have a field outside. Uh, it's possible. I mean, there's probably a ton of games that we I have bet it's to... coming this year. I bet it is. Because Bethesda loves to announce, boom, it's out. I think so. Th- think now, I'm that's right. cool. One thing I do think they might do, they might have a game that's available now. You know, they usually do that. Ooh, what yeah. would it be? Ah, Doom 2. I'm just kidding. Oh my like god, it. if Doom 2 was available now? Beastly. Yeah, it would, it, would, it, would, it would wreck a lot of households. A lot of wives would be walking out on their husbands. Pants that would was be pooped. Food, yeah. That was money for the baby. I mean, uh, and, and these guys would be at home playing Doom 2. Oh but uh, I, I don't know. Maybe this game you're talking about, Starfield, it sounds so uh, mysterious. Maybe uh, that's, that'll be the release. It's available now. No one knows what it is. But the name Yeah, is go exciting. buy it. You'll find out when you play the game. Buy Starfield. Oh, uh, but yeah, I think we'll see Doom 2. I think Doom 2 will be um, revealed. We know that's coming. Uh, Doom, for me, at least, it doesn't play as well as it does on my PC. But consoles... That was the best running shooter I've ever played. So it was the best. Do you think in software is going to be developing it though, BC? Because they're busy with Rage Two now and um, Quick Champions. You think they'll they'll be working on it though? I don't know if it'll be. Or it. Who do you think? It's. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know every every development. But I know it's under the umbrella of Bethesda. So I'm I'm thinking. I, w- I would be shocked if we didn't see Doom 2 at the Bethesda. Oh, I I agree. Eventually, there will be a Doom 2. No doubt. They'll, uh, oh, in mean, software, will do Doom, a Doom 2. Doom came out when? Uh, 2016. Yes. So, I mean, it's been yeah. two years. And that game, they've already got the engine. It already runs as smooth as butter on, on Xbox vanilla. You yeah. know? So, I mean, all they got to do is kind of repopulate the world, change the maps, and and put in some new enemies, and they got Doom 2. It's like the, the, the original PC games. They all look the same, but they were different worlds, different environments, different slightly changed enemies and that's really all they got to do you know um and i think we'll definitely see that so i'll, I'm excited. I'll be shocked i'll be shocked if they announce like we're working on rage 2 we're working on quick champions and now here's doom 2 like i mean when you think about it that's they're your doing hands a conference yeah. for a reason you know yeah. they're doing a conference for a reason um they can't uh announce what is the scary game they just released uh evil within that's already gone so i mean yeah. they're doing a, a conference to announce games and and of course we we don't have anything other than maybe Wolfenstein 2 for the Switch, right? That's a really yeah. good point, though, Beastly, is because even Pete Hines on Twitter a couple weeks ago said that this showcase is going to be, like, their longest ever and that they're going to have yeah, a lot so to show. Games. Yeah, a lot, apparently. I don't know about Pete Hines, but Duncan Hines is on Twitter today, too. I saw some really <laughs> awesome picks. I don't know who that is. Okay. <laughs> Duncan Hines, okay. So, I mean, that's my thoughts on it. I think that we'll mm-hmm. see the Wolfenstein, uh, Wolfenstein 2 Switch maybe the release date. Isn't that coming in July? I think that's already got a release date. I think it's July. Ooh, I I have to play that. PC, it's so awesome. And and possibly, I mean, what else could they put on the Switch? Because their engines work really well on the Switch. It's really sick. And that's what I think about Bethesda. Hmm. Hector, you got anything else? No, that's pretty much it. I was going to mention Doom 2, but like when you guys said that, that's that's it. I mean, I don't think they could do it without Doom 2. It's the perfect timing for it in a couple years. Um, and it, you know, it's still not going to be released till next year anyway, but at least they announce it now. It's about the time that they would do that. So, but yeah. All right. I, uh, I got one more little thing I want to include as well. I predict that remasters for both Fallout 3 and Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion will be announced. Fallout 3 no will release this fall and Oblivion will be released early next year. What do you guys think? Okay. You think so? <sighs> Fallout 3... I want no, that game I to be remastered it, so badly. I think Hector. if they do remaster, no it's not going to just be Fallout Three. I think they'll do all, like all the ones before. I would think New Vegas be as well. You think they'll remaster Vegas, that? New Vegas. I think they'll have like a bundle like that. Like they'll have like the HD collection, like mm-hmm. what um what they did at Halo for um what my Xbox did for Halo. Okay. But Maybe. I think it, that's what they'll do because I think that will sell better because you have the whole bundle together. You know what I mean? Like that's did I think that's the point. Do you play those? I mean. I you know, wouldn't. I'm just saying that that was the only thing we saw. I would definitely wouldn't play that. I'm just letting you know. I'm over that shit. Like, I, <laughs> Fallout? I would rather see Morrowind. What? You guys are nuts. It. I would rather see something like that. You know, Morrowind came out on the original Xbox. Yeah. It looked like crap. I bought it because people said it was it was fun to play. I started the game and looked at the world and said, hell no. But if they uh, if they remastered that and maybe updated it on you know current yeah. machines, that would be fun because that was an experience that I sadly walked away from yeah morrowind could be cool remastered i've never played that game but i think fallen 3 and Elder scrolls oblivion will be 
both be remastered. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't put this as a prediction, but now I'm thinking of this just now. I have a feeling that some sort of big surprise from Bethesda is going to happen. Like at least one big game that maybe it's an outsourced studio. I don't know, but that's probably about it. Okay. All right. You guys want to move on, on to, to Square. Square Enix? Okay, what you got? Because I got nothing. Go really? ahead, BC. Yeah, I'm sorry. Just Cause 4. I mean, that's probably going to happen. That's about it, though. Just Cause? Like... Oh, man, don't do that. Look, are they gonna going to say name? Kingdom Hearts? Finally, they're gonna, are they going to mention the release date? 2021. Listen. Oh, the actual so... date. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, okay, so Final Fantasy VII Remake will, will have a release date. And it will be released this year. At least for Fuck no. Life. Are you kidding me? Tell me now, man. That is it's way good. too far away. No, that no, game is not. years away. That's insane. Chat, is what? Beastly out of his mind or <laughs> am no, I out of my mind? Can I, can I explain why? Okay, go ahead. Okay. Final Fantasy VII Remake for You're PlayStation crazy. was announced at E3 2015. Count those years. So that's three years at least that the game has been worked on, thought about. That game's hardly even... They, they like just started working on it back then. Totally not true. <laughs> now, and when you take I into just account... I don't think it's even close. When you take into account that the game is going to come out in three parts, Robbie, it's not a complete product we're going to get. They're, they already have the story. That's right. It's episodic. They are, they, oh, listen, it's, it's virtually a remake. It's not like they have to come up with a Final Fantasy story. One of the best stories has already been told. They're just remastering and remaking that. They, they built the engine. You can see that. The character models look amazing. I, do, I just feel like that build. game's barely started development. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just well, don't think we'll so. We'll see. But I think I think there's a good chance that we'll we'll see at least part one of that shown and talked about because I mean it seems kind of unfair that you can win an E3 and then a decade later the game's still not out that just seems kind of unfair but yeah I think yeah I think Final Fantasy VII and I went even further uh, and I'm sorry Robbie this is going to hurt your Canadian feelings mm -hmm. oh, yeah. a, play, a playable demo will be available at the time of the conference <laughs> as well okay as well you know what maybe that one maybe that one actually mm -hmm. might happen but. That game is not awesome. Because they, they got like to somehow reignite that fire of excitement that people had three years ago. You mm -hmm. know, if they just say Final Fantasy VII is coming. Thank you. They say it in a British voice, too. It's not going to be excited. <laughs> they they got to say, okay, this is what the game looks like. Mm -hmm. This is how far we've gotten. We project that all three parts will be out by 2020, but part one will be available in October. I mean, to me, I, I'm thinking that's a real possibility. I've, and of course, what you guys mentioned earlier, Kingdom Hearts will get an awesome release date. I think that that game, you said 2021, get out of here. They're talking about, they're playing that, they're showing it. No, it's, Kingdom it's, Hearts 3 might come out this year. Final Fantasy 7? No, not till 2021. I say, I say Kingdom Hearts, though, I still say, I don't think they're going to get a true release date. I think it's going to be like, they're going to be like, oh, spring of this year, or they're going to say this quarter. I don't think they're going to say the exact month. I so I have a feeling they're still not on the month yet, and I feel like that's gonna give them leeway to push it back, and that's what's gonna scare me. I have a feeling they're gonna say like uh, winter, they're gonna be like winter 2018, and it's not gonna come out to 2019. Like yeah. I feel like that's what it's it's gonna be something like that. Well, like, I, I, this is my prediction though about Kingdom Hearts, and I want to uh, say shout out to Cheney. Cheney said Final Fantasy VII Remastered is ahead of Kingdom Hearts three in development. Is it he true? didn't write it, but. He didn't write it, but he meant to write Robbie, exclamation point at the end of that sentence. Um, now, Kingdom Hearts, my prediction uh, is that they show the Avengers world at E3. Oh, the, the Crystal Dyna Dynamics game? Is that the one? Kingdom Hearts 3. I want them to show, because it, Avengers is under the... the oh, Avengers you're saying Marvel for is. Kingdom Hearts. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought I you think meant if the they Square show Enix something game. like that, or maybe or uh, Dan Star Dan Wars, yeah. which is less Star exciting. Wars. If they yeah. show that at, at, at E3, that's going to get people super hyped to have maybe Sora fighting with Iron Man and, you know, Captain America and how he would look in that world. Because, you know, Kingdom Hearts, they always transfer the characters, the cartoon characters, into the style mm -hmm. of the world. And that's what makes it so endearing mm -hmm. and amazing. So that's what I think. Of course, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Yeah. That's a kind of, a, you know, a well-known fact that we're going to see that. And I got uh, two uh, kind of out there possibilities. Oh, we want to hear him, Hector. What you got though? Anything for for what for that? Square I mean, Enix. I Square Enix. I said Square Enix. I say they're gonna come out and say it's gonna be. They're gonna say something crazy. Like I say, I don't think it's gonna be winter 2000. I just threw it out there before. I think it's gonna be in 2019 anyway. But I think they're gonna give you like um like a season, and then say it's like 2019, and then they're gonna still push it back. I don't think it's ready as much as people Final think. Final Fantasy think or Kingdom Hearts? Kingdom Hearts. 
I think it's mm-hmm. I think it's further away than Final Fantasy. I think Final yeah. Fantasy Seven, like cause you forgot it's episodic. I think that like you basically said, I think like he's right about like the the first parts could be available. I don't think it's gonna be a demo. I mean, that would be kind of crazy. They released a demo for Final Fantasy. Demo. You know, I'm just starting to think you guys yeah. are both off your rocker. I don't know, nuts. man. I think that that's one day when you turn 18, Robbie. Can't <laughs> yeah, wait till I get to that ripe old age of 18. Yeah, yeah, feel good. <laughs> so my my out there predictions stuck in that 12 year old body, you know. It's a, I know we all see it. You can Fuck shave you. that chocolate <laughs> off your face when we podcast. <laughs> yeah. uh, I want to see, and to me, this would be awesome because the mm-hmm. Nintendo Switch has shown that it's capable of doing some pretty powerful stuff, or at least kind of modern video games. Yep. I think that we we get. I would like to see. I don't think we will necessarily see it. A Nier Automata Nintendo Switch port and a Final Fantasy 15 Nintendo Switch port. Oh. If they did that, it would be earth shattering. I actually think that's pretty likely. I can see that. That would be incredible. And and I came up with these notes from work and I was working. That's called double teaming or multitasking. Beastly, you are fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Insane. So that's my uh, suggestions or hopes. For Square Enix. Square are, we, are we going to Big 3 yet? Or is it time uh, for Big 3? Well, Microsoft will I, I be next when we're ready. My, okay, Microsoft can be next. What do you got, Not too Nerdy? What do you got? I Here's the thing, dude. Like, I, I, is thing. off the top? Here we go, here we go. I, dude, yeah. I think I, no one's talking about this. Right? Everyone's talking about the first person to announce a new console would be... PlayStation is something that people are crazy to say PlayStation is going to do it this year. Mm. People are saying that, like, no one's really mentioned that what if Microsoft came out first and said that this is, we're going to start from scratch and do this. What if they truly gave up on the Xbox One and <laughs> want to distance themselves from it? You know what this I mean? This would be worse than the dream. Are you <laughs> shitting me? You actually right, think this, this is, is going to happen? That's like, that's like off the topic thing. Like, I, I'm going to tell you my another prediction on my, the next go around. But I'm just saying this is going to be a crazy thing. I, I, yeah, I think this like, sounds fucking not, crazy already. <laughs> you I, I don't just think it has to be this E3. It might not be this E3, but I think Ooh, overall... What? This is this E3 predictions, not next year's. Well, Hector. I'll tell you this right now. Okay, okay I'll, go, I'll get more You're serious. You're cheating. I'll get more serious. Come on. They're, they're going to announce that they purchase a third-party company, and they're going to they purchase a third-party company, they're going to make it the second party, like, okay. you know, studio. They're, they're going to be a big one, too. I have a feeling it's going to be a big one that they mm. joined with them. I think that's the only way that it's going to happen. They're, they're going to sign with someone. And you know those rumors that they kept saying that they're going to sign with someone and they're going to now, like, be partners with them? I think they're going to have to do one of those rumors. I know they're, like, off the dome, like, rumors, but, like, I think it's going to be something big that they're going to sign with someone. That's only... an example. Who would be a big company for them to sign with? Just one and just any of it off the top of your head. Um, fully sign with them right now. I don't know. I think it will have to be someone big. Like it will have to be someone big and like to, to pretty much, you know, tip it over to their side. I don't the only know. company that Microsoft could sign with that could tip it over to their side would be Sony. And that's not going to happen. Uh, you know, the, mm-hmm. the only developers out there that are really sought after have a pedigree they have a back catalog of games that are already shown prominence and dominance xbox this is exactly what i wrote i'm going to go verbatim here uh where where the hell are we xbox xbox this is what i want to see games that look interesting and play well they need exclusives period badly look microsoft has already shown that having the heart the, the most powerful hardware the best place to play real, true 4K games. And, of course, remasters of old games in 4K, up-res, Xbox 360, and Xbox One games don't really matter. There's only so many times that gamers want to play Gears of War, Halo, Quantum Break, or one of the other two possible IPs that they have. Right, right. People want something new on the Xbox. Look at what's going on with PlayStation. There's tons of games being announced and coming out that are different, that are different, different kinds of experiences. I talked about Detroit Become Human. It's a different kind of experience. Of course, we played Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain, so we know that kind of experience, yeah. but it's something different than, mm-hmm. say, God of War or a Resident Evil or a Mortal Kombat. It's something they take chances. Microsoft isn't taking chances, and when they do release a game that people are looking forward to, it comes out broken. PUBG should have been earth-shattering for Microsoft. Yeah. It should have changed the game literally for the Xbox. But they let 
uh, cousin Jed and, and 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 Bryson develop it on the Xbox, and when it came out, it played like wet socks. It was horrible. So they need and, and look look what's going on with State of Decay too, another brand new game that comes out to, I would say less than stellar reviews because it it seems like Microsoft's Q and A their quality control. I don't know if they're smoking blunts or bowls, but they're smoking something on the job to let these games clear, go gold, and then come out to the consumer with this many issues. They've got to fix two major problems. They've got to get new blood developing games and studios that actually know what they're doing. Yeah. And they've got to be able to release games that are working well. That's what they've got to do. All this power doesn't matter. It doesn't. The Xbox One X, of course, you can play every third party on the X and it'll look better. But why are people still buying the PlayStation? They're buying the thing them because... Is, they, like you said, like you just said, like why are people buying a PlayStation? For what, what part? Like why are they buying it, Beastly? People are buying the PlayStation... Be- I won't say it's because we're where all your friends play because I don't play a lot of online games with people. Mm. You know, I'll play, you know, I'll go into a room, a party with people I don't know. I play PlayStation predominantly because there are games that I can't play anywhere else on it. Yeah. The, exactly. the majority of the Me games too. that I play, I can't play on my computer. You know, it would be nice to play God of War on here, right? But it takes away from the mythos and the magic of the PlayStation. Right. So of course, if you play, you know, God of War on a 1080 Ti, it's going to run amazingly. It's going to be better. But it's not made for that. Some people cry foul. Say, it's not fair that I can't play these games on my PC. Well, it, it's not fair that you can't put you know, a Porsche engine into a, a Cadillac. It's not made for. And so that's the thing that keeps people coming to the PlayStation. They, they started off with the best uh, uh, promise for the consumer. They were consumer friendly. They, they didn't want to change and, and uproot decades of the way people played video games. They wanted to keep it the same. They came out with very sound hardware, and they came out with a proven track record of uh, IPs that people loved, and they yeah. kept improving on them yeah. and making them better. And that's what Microsoft's problem is: they can't, you can't do hardware. You got to start at the the foundation of why people play video games because of the game. Yeah, going into this E3, they need games, hundred percent. I think we can all agree on that. They need yeah. exclusives. They need something to just a reason to buy your console, and it's their console. And it's interesting that they're going with the strategy of let's throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks you know they got the xbox game pass thing they got exclusives on xbox and pc and this also goes along with one of my first predictions too is that microsoft will announce at least at least two new first party AAA ips for or at their conference i think phil spencer is knows that they need first party games i think the problem is they just don't have the amount of studios like sony does mm-hmm. so i think we're going to see at least two first party games announced like big triple a well, new ips i think they need that i think phil knows they need that and i think he has known for years did. now i think it's just they've been in development for a long time and they're kind of like getting their ducks in a row i think you're going to see that at this c3 i think they're going to come out swinging i really think they well are. you're say first party studios so which one of them are going to make it then for which which from what they have right now who would be the ones that could make it well That's no i mean like, like outsourced like either they open a new studio so or party, they just like a second party studio yeah i'm just saying like okay. exclusive games yeah 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 i got you yeah i got you just like, it's, it's almost like they're working in two different worlds though it's like and I, you know i love sony i love sony it's not better than my pc but i love sony i love what they've created <laughs> as far as these worlds and these games it seems like you can't find one on the xbox like that you just can't find one it's like Uncharted, you got Bloodborne, you got God of War, you got Detroit, you got tons of games that you can only play on PlayStation that just have amazingly, brilliantly realized worlds. Yeah. And and and, and great gameplay mechanics that you feel rewarded for playing. You feel rewarded for exp- exploration. Horizon Zero Dawn. You got all these great games, and I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of one. I can't think of one. I'm not being. I'm not being facetious. I can't think of one on the Xbox. That's because they they cancel a lot. I mean, they cancel what Fable. They cancel uh, Scalebound. You know, there's there's games that, that that people were actually interested. in. I don't know about Fable as well. There are people who are interested yeah, in Scalebound. Fable, I know no. I was. I know yeah, I was interested cool, in Scalebound. Yeah. I looked pretty cool. And guess what happened? Nothing. You know, I mean, like yeah. the the ones that they actually could have took a risk on, the ones that were different, or the ones that they canceled. Like, so it was like. I mean, some games look good on the Xbox, and you got to wonder, though. It's like when Quantum Break came out, I bought it day one. I was like, ooh, this looks amazing. I, I got to play this. I got to try it. I played it. I beat it. And when, it, when it, the credits rolled, I looked at Kate, and I was like, what have we just done with 22 hours of our lives? It just wasn't fun. Yeah. And it's like they, 
they missed out on the aspect that keeps people coming back to make you want to play it again. It just was redundant and dry and sterile, and the characters, you didn't care about them, and it was like, come on. you got to do something that's meaningful for the gamer. you got to give me a reason to turn on my Xbox. Game yeah. Pass is probably the only thing to me that Xbox has going for itself. Too bad I don't have time to play all those old games. There's nothing new, but you can't beat a next Netflix formula of paying ten dollars and having a hundred games you can play. You just can't beat that. It's great to have, yeah. but other than that, there's really no other than Netflix and, and YouTube. Thank you, Microsoft. I do love the way your controller feels, uh, but there's That's really no weird. reason for me to, to to turn my Xbox and hope. And I love Phil Spencer. I, I think he's a genuine guy. I think the Don Matrick completely screwed him. Uh, and, and screwed the Xbox brand with he the really kind of did, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that Phil came in and he he made a lot of great moves and, and tried to make things more consumer friendly with the backwards compatibility and the Game Pass. But I, he has to, like Robbie said, he's got to bear down, get with these developers, hire new talent, hire people who have crazy ideas. And say, let me see what you can do. They need new teams because- for sure. They need new leadership. They need new teams. And I think the other problem is too. You look at things like God of War with Sony. Like they completely reinvented that game, and it was brilliant. The problem is with Microsoft too. They come out with Halo and Gears of War and all this, but it's so similar to what they've already done. Like they're not taking risks. They're not taking chances. And they need either new IPs or they just need new sort of directions and visions for whatever franchises they already have. You know, like it's just mm. it's kind of the same thing we've already had before, and they're not. They're not yeah, taking like what they risks. did with God of War, okay? Halo is a perfect example. You know, ever since Halo has been under new development, it's been kind of at a stalemate. It's been kind of in the same place. It's just kind of a slightly different story with kind of different, you know, protagonists. You got Master Chief. He's the same. You know, you know he's going to be in the game. He's not going to say shit. You know, you're going to have, you know, these enemies coming that all look the same. They need to change it and make it fresh. Don't just change it for the sake of changing it. Change it, arm it. Send it out to, to people to test it. Make sure people appreciate the change. If they do, go with it. If they don't, pull back and try something else. But, you know, I don't want to play the same game I've been playing for the last 20 years. Yeah. I mean, it looks better, but I don't want to play the same game. There's only so many times I want to play Pac-Man before it has to turn into something else. And when right. you got Gears of War, you got Halo, and whatever two other exclusives that Microsoft has, it's the uh, same thing. And Forza Horizon 4 is pretty likely this year, too. So there's also that, but again, that's kind of the same game same again. Thing. Yeah, it like, needs to it needs to be something different, and and that's what I hope. I'm not rooting against Microsoft. Like I said, I love their control. We want them to succeed. But, that's why we're critical about them. You know? Yeah, we want I, mean, them to do better. I mean, Sony's in a great spot because they don't even have to try. They're just mm. doing what they're doing. They're continuing on the path that they've been on. They've been fostering growth. They've been fostering uh, imagination with their development teams. They've been letting people, you know, push the limit of what they've been trying to do, the vision for their gamers. And, and it's been working out really well. I don't know if Microsoft has been micromanaging these development studios and, and these development houses saying we want things to be a certain way, but it's all come across as stale. It's all come across as very sterile and very dry. And it just feels like a hollow game. And yeah. it needs to have heart. And that's what we're seeing with Sony at least in my opinion. I think uh, I have another prediction. It's sort of like two of us, uh, they're together. They're going to team so up with Nintendo. They're, they're team up. No, no, no. I think <laughs> I, love I that. think that one, they're going to have a price drop for the Xbox One X. I think they're going to they're gonna do okay. a, a slight price drop. And really? then two, I think they're going to do another skew Xbox One X, which is, is going to include the, the Xbox One Elite, the controller. They're going to do like a special, I feel like they're going to do a special thing. But that's and they're banking gonna try, on hardware again, though. That's but, still the problem. But I know that, but they're, they're going to bank on all these these uh, companies doing all these battle royales that people are going to want those pro controllers now. And I think that the, the elite controllers, I think they're going to bank on getting one that includes that with it. And you remember, like, they're hard to find it for a while. You know, you know what we call that in gaming circles, Mr. Not Too Nerdy? That's called a Band-Aid. You yeah. can't Band-Aid a problem like that. You know, you're going to get just, you know, a small amount of quick sales because of a controller, yeah. but it doesn't fix the issue. You just put a Band-Aid on your problem that you're, you're, hemorrhaging, you're hemorrhaging consumers to yeah. your competitors because you don't have a sustainable uh, – you don't have a sustainable – market you don't have anything that people consistently like, come for yeah i and, think they're and, gonna do something battle for five i think they're gonna they're gonna do something with ea that it's gonna be like a package deal i have a feeling because remember they're still in bed with with ea like it's just it hasn't helped them before i mean it, i understand what you're saying but it's not helping still in bed with them yeah they you know, together. it's not helping them uh and, and see i understand what you're, what you're saying and of course you don't work for microsoft but that kind of thought process is what they've been doing 
And I, that's why I they're agree. in the position they're in. Yeah. They have got to change that type of thought process. They've got to say, okay, this, ha- you know, what did Einstein say? To do the same thing over and over again uh, and expect a different result is a definition of insanity. Yeah. It would be insane for them to say, okay, we've, we've created a completely new uh, system with 16,000 teraflops of power, you know? And, and it's still not yeah. selling more than the competition? Well, yeah. Maybe we should make 2 billion teraflops. No, the, the thing that they're, they're missing out on is the thing they're literally missing out on, and that's meaningful games. That's all that matters. Microsoft mm-hmm. needs to pull back from this play anywhere BS. I don't need to play your games on, on my PC because it makes, mm-hmm. me, makes me resent my Xbox. It makes me hate my Xbox. When I play CFDs on my Xbox, and then I come and play it here, you know, with 16 gigs of RAM and uh, a 1060, 6 gigabyte, it makes me look at my Xbox and say, you worthless piece of shit. You look like a VCR. <laughs> but if I can play a game that's good on my Xbox, it might not have the, the highest resolution or the, the highest frame rate. That's actually a good game that I can't come over here and completely blow it out of the water. It makes my Xbox have meaning. And if right. they're going to continue with Xbox conferences, they've got to make that Xbox have meaning. And you can't give all your stuff to everything else, yeah. to play everywhere and be on PC. You got to make that console yeah. matter again. And and right now, frankly, it doesn't. And I only wrote one thing about Xbox when we've been talking yeah. about it. This whole yeah, time. you know what, Beastly? Can I just add yeah. something? I yeah. know exactly what you mean. My Xbox One. I don't even have it as a part of this setup right now. I don't have it as a part of my stream setup. Like my PS4 is sitting there. The Xbox One is in the living room on the big TV. You know what I use it for? Oh, YouTube and Netflix. Guess. That's it. Oh. Yeah. It's Maybe great they for make that. A Netflix uh, console. It, it's and a great YouTube cable box. Like I even have the cable box of the TV yeah. hooked up to it. Like it's great for watching TV and stuff. But look, that's all you gotta like... do is, is just release a new Xbox SKU with a Netflix symbol on the top, or a Netflix and a YouTube a literal symbol. Netflix box. Yeah, they, you know, they got to do it at this give point. Microsoft some money. <laughs> you know what though? Yeah. The definition of Sandy, like you said, though, I agree. That's like someone buying an Xbox One. You know, giving it away to family member, then they go in to buy Xbox One S for no reason because they thought, oh, I'll use the blue, the, nice. the 4K Blu-ray player. You know, I thought it'd be cool, and then I'm like, oh, I don't even like the 4K Blu-ray on that. I got a real one, so then I sold that one, and then I'm like, for some drunken reason, I end up getting the Xbox One X. That's what and happens when you're a bartender. Since then, Lots I think it's, it sank in the Sea of Thieves somewhere because I haven't seen that shit since. Like, it's somewhere over there <laughs> in the collection, in the game room. I don't know it's what the hell is going on with it. Like, uh, it, it seriously, it, it has to be the, the dustiest console I have. Like, legit. Like, <laughs> well, let me, let me just say this. Yeah. This is right next to the, the, the brand that new. That is so like, damn beautiful. Oh, my. Put it, bring it a little bit. Unplug it so you don't un, you know, knock everything yeah, off. How about that? Plug it, yeah. Oh, my God. That looks so nice. This is my first yeah, time actually awesome. seeing it. Wow. I gotta like unplug all that shit. Damn it, you're gonna it's make like, me break it. Yeah. It's like showing off your um your uh foreign girlfriend to all your friends and look at her, spin her oh, spin beautiful. around. Yeah, Claudia. spin around. Nerdy. That is around awesome. Oh my god, that is sick. Those curves. You got the sexiest flow. Well, it's got yeah, some nice curves. curvature. Yeah. 36, 20, no, it's like oh, 36, yeah. 36, 36. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Truly and DJ is saying Netflix Xbox coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, it sounds like it. Yeah, one of the best decisions I made recently because I was really on the fence about it. actually the money I got paid for uh, a company, a Japanese company, paid me five hundred and fifty dollars to use one second of my Final Fantasy VII remake uh, video. So they paid me. I couldn't believe it. Really? They contact me. Said, Holy shit! God. I'll send you a link to the commercial. It's literally one second. That's insane. Or less. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, that's extra money. I'm going to buy an Xbox One X. And, you know, the, the other podcast, the guy I was talking to, and people who follow me on Twitter were like, Beastly, please don't. Don't. You know, I can <laughs> see the hands coming, coming through my mind. Upgrade your PC like, instead. Do it. You know? just, just, just put it towards your PC. And I was like, I don't really want I'm not a PC gamer. Best money I spent on gaming, that Xbox would be sitting right where that one's at in a very obscure spot. And I'd walk past it and, and dust it and say, ooh, you look better than my PS4 Pro as I turn on the PS4 Pro. I <laughs> yeah. mean... So I'm happy exactly. I didn't buy it. I, exactly. I, I'm, I'm so sorry that you, you fell for the okie doke. Yeah, even Cheney yeah. in the chat is saying I have, he hasn't played his Xbox in months. Come home and literally five to six days, I'm already bored of it. Yeah, Cheney. I mean, it's literally just Netflix for me, YouTube, Twitch, a 
very occasionally I'll just sit on the couch and play a game on it, like, late at night. That's it. But most, for the most part, you know, it's my PC, my PS4 in this setup right now, and it's, it's great. Like, you know, all of, most of the exclusives, like Halo 5, or Halo 5, Halo 6, Gears of War 5, when those games are announced, obviously they'll probably be on PC, so, yeah, I mean, what's the point? Like, just personally, mm-hmm. you know? Well, I mean, I think that's enough of our well wishes for Microsoft. If Phil Spencer and some of his lackeys were to watch the Beastly Thoughts uh, reunion show, they would definitely have some good ideas. But it's probably too late because E3 is like two and a half weeks away. I have one prediction, though, that I want to mention that relies kind of on Microsoft as a service. I don't know if this will happen, but I'm just going to say it anyways. I think Microsoft will announce that Xbox Live Gold and Xbox Game Pass will be merged together into one subscription. And the price will be 10 US dollars per month or 60 US dollars per year. So basically what Game Pass is now, it'll be the same price, but you get both gold with online and you get Game Pass. I think for the same price. That means everybody Mm. would get... No, that'll never happen. I think it'll happen. I think it could. You're giving away Game Pass I think they want one service. I think they want one service. I think if that happens, it'll be more expensive, though. If if it happens, it has to be more expensive. Yeah, they can't give away Game Pass for more expensive. Yeah. It's not for free. Well, it's more money than gold is right now. Like I'm saying, they put the two together and it costs more. 69 69 let me see gold is what gold is 69 dollars right now so it's it'll be the same price as per what you just said it'd have to be 79 okay but, but per month it's twice as much as though is now. yeah but per month it's twice as much as well well it would be nice for the consumer but microsoft this is, it's about making money uh and and microsoft is hemorrhaging right now because you know you can get their stuff everywhere it's like someone cloning your girlfriend, and if you're out having dinner with her, you look across the street, and another guy is smacking her on the ass. I mean, Microsoft has their games everywhere. You can play them anywhere you want. Nice you lost analogy. Me that analogy. Right? You lost me. I'm trying to figure So, look. I, what? Games, look, let me explain. <laughs> I'm sure some people in the comments hold on, hold on. know what I just said. Microsoft... You can play their games on PC. You can play them on Xbox. Oh, got you. Got so, you. The slap so, in the ass part. Got it. Okay, so, so not sleeping like with the X analogy or whatever this is. And, and you take her out to a nice candlelit dinner, and you look across the street, and you see some guy in a biker suit smack your girl in the ass. It's a clone. Somehow it, it, it demeans your experience. Okay? That's what I'm saying. Got you. So, I don't know. I could just see in the future at some point they just make <laughs> one service, and it costs about the same or slightly more than, like, Game Pass on its own. I could see that happening. I don't know what the price would be exactly, but I think one day it could happen. hundred dollars a year would be a great, great deal. Uh, you Maybe know, it's fifty nine dollars like yeah. for Xbox Live, and and if you pay for Game Pass, you're paying one hundred and twenty dollars a month. If you buy them both together, one hundred and twenty dollars a year. Or if they could somehow make it one hundred dollars a year, everybody would buy it, and I yeah. think it'd be a good yeah. for everybody. So one question uh, that, before we move on for this, mm-hmm. uh, one question for you guys, uh, for you guys. Because you guys already know I predicted that they're, they'll eventually announce, I think, a new console first. I think they'll be the first one to announce a new console. It's Microsoft? Like, they You're out of your mind. But, but do you no. think, do you guys think that because of the how bad this hardware console is doing overall, not bad, but it's slowed down and it's not doing as well as the other ones, do you think that this is going to be a way for Microsoft to step out of the hardware game? Like, or you still think they're going to still do, even though, keep in game. mind, no, Xbox, they'll do another console. You can, keep in mind, Xbox overall, the brand, loses money from Microsoft. That's been like that for the last years. So mm-hmm. it loses money from them overall. And now it's losing even more money because with the Xbox One X, it costs so much to produce it. If they're not purchasing as much, then it's still, isn't that mean they're losing even more money in normal? No. Yeah, but they want to make money back on want. sales. They want to make money back on game they, sales they and service. But that's the thing, Xbox, though. They're not, Xbox Gold. That's the yeah. thing, though. They're making money on Xbox Gold, but you gotta keep in mind it's slowing down with the sales of games. Like that, that's a problem right there. So I'm mm-hmm. saying, like, if they don't, if the investors own Microsoft, if they don't start seeing money come in, do you think Microsoft will ever step aside? You still think they have at least one more in them that they're they gonna do? Tell- they, they do. This is what I think. Okay, I think that if Sony were in the same boat and this was, were to happen, they could be sustainable without a console. I think Sony already has uh, an established line of games that people would, if you released The Last of Us 3 on a Nintendo console or, or a PC or an Xbox, people would buy the hell out of it because you know what they expect. Mm-hmm. Microsoft, you got three or four, maybe five exclusives or IPs that people, you know, are, that are really meaningful to right, gamers. Right. If they got rid of their console, that would be the only thing they'd have left. They can't, yeah. you know, some of these other games are huge flops. They couldn't just, yeah. you know, move forward and port those over to other consoles. It would be almost a meaningless gesture. The Xbox used to be number one, right? The 360 was number one. 
uh, well, until PlayStation caught up, but right. it was number one for a long time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and they made tons of money there. And so they see that. They see the potential of capturing that again. And, and you know what? You got to keep trying until you get it right. So I don't think they're going to let this go. Look what they did with the Xbox yeah. One X, you know, just on a whim. You know, Phil Spencer said, we're going to do this. We're going to move forward. We're going to make something more powerful to see if maybe that could write the ship because they heard that people bought PlayStations because the PlayStation was more powerful than the Xbox. So they had to check that box to see if it was true. So they checked it and they said, we're going to make the Xbox One X to see if that's true. And if it is true, those people will come over to the Xbox One X. Right. Ended up not being true. And so now they say, okay, PlayStation is winning now because we know we have the best hardware. They're winning because of the games. So now we have to try that. That's their only option. Do you see how well that worked out, though? Because I think if the roles were reversed, I think PS, I think Sony as a whole would have dropped PlayStation. I think if it didn't start out, if the PlayStation 4 didn't do well, it would have been done. Because remember, they're in for bankruptcy. They, You're they're, absolutely right. They're they lost everything. If, if it was reverse role, and then Sony, no one's buying PlayStations. It would. I think Sony would have not been able to sustain. They would well, not been in the market. They would have had to Sony sell been, PlayStation to someone else. Yeah, Sony would have went bankrupt if it weren't for PlayStation. But yeah. if you look yeah. at if the if history is any indication, everything that Sony failed, they, they kind of gave up on the Vio, their TVs, the phones. Mm. Well, the phone, a new phone just came out, but I got my yeah. Samsung Galaxy S9. You betrayed <laughs> Sony, basically. I can't believe you. Sony, Why would Sony. you do that? It's a PlayStation they tattoo. Know I still Come on. In my heart. Hey, remove your tattoo. Yeah, your take Sony that shit tattoo. off. <laughs> <laughs> no, you gotta take it off. No, no, you but, lost your loyalty um, to Sony. Yeah, if Sony were, were failing, then it would be the end of the company, uh, and that's just yeah. the truth. Because if you look at everything else they failed and they they gave it mm-hmm. up, you can't keep hemorrhaging money if you know that you're losing money, and that's right. business. But you know, that's just the way that you know business runs. If you're making money, you're gonna keep making. It. If you're losing it, you gotta stop it and try something else. So, mm-hmm. uh, I think Microsoft will continue. They'll continue with their, their hardware, uh, and they're going to keep trying until they, they get it right. Hopefully they do, because if they make Sony – Sony's doing great. They're not even trying. But if Microsoft comes out with two or three or four IPs and people say, holy shit, this actually looks like it's amazing. It actually looks like they, they, they put someone behind the, the wheel who cares about this world. I want to play this game. Like Orient and Blind Force, to me, best Xbox One game I've ever played. It was a meaningful experience. They need to have more developers creating worlds that really matter to the gamers. And if they do that, they could possibly survive this. They could come out okay. I don't think they could ever win this at this point. Funny thing is, yeah. so if the Xbox comes out of price drop, someone's going to come right behind them and be like, uh, we're dropping our prices too. <laughs> They're going <laughs> to undercut them. It'll be like 2015 all over again. Just drop it yeah. $5 cheaper. Oh, man. All right, thank you. Like, they, all right, everyone yeah. claps and yeah. walk off stage, drops the mic, done. <laughs> All right, so we're going to move on to PlayStation. Whew, um, the big one. One of the well, big ones. It, it's, it's a big one, but it's it's that one that has so much mystery behind it because they kind of already went out on the record and said what this is going to be about. PlayStation said that this E3 is going to focus primarily on Death Stranding, Ghost of Tsushima, yep. Spider-Man, and The Last the, the Last of Us Part Two. Ding, ding! Mm-hmm. Best game of all time. Um, as well as third-party exclusives. I mean, third, third-party games. So I don't know, other than that, well, I do have a few, well, at least one. I, I got one or two games I think will be announced okay. that I got. Right. You want me to go first? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So, I'm sure you guys are very aware of uh, From Software's new game that was teased. Oh, Bloodborne at game- Hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus. On hold on. Jump on the gun here. Shut up. <laughs> hold on. Let me, let That's me the only exp- one I had, Robbie. I had to say it. <laughs> Basically, let me explain. All right, all right. So, of course, that game was teased as Shadows Die Twice. So... From Software's upcoming game, simply known as Shadows Die Twice, will be revealed to not be Bloodborne 2, but a brand new IP. It will be released sometime in 2019, and it will be a PS4 exclusive. There you go, Beastly. It's not a Bloodborne 2. Okay, God damn it. Great. You, you made a crappy projection, so let me correct that. From <laughs> what? Software's oh, come on. new IP. Well, the, the Jack, can you believe release. this shit? Apparently my predictions just suck. All right. <laughs> from Canada, you can apologize now. Uh, so, Bloodborne 2 is going to be revealed at E3 this year. I believe that uh, Bloodborne 1 saw critical and, and commercial success. I think that the people who played it, for me, it was my very first Soul-style game. I never played Dark Souls, Demon Souls. I owned them uh, on my modded PS3, but I didn't get around to them because they just seemed too damn hard. Right. But when I bought, bought Bloodborne... Kate and I played through it together, and it was such um, uh, an amazing experience. It just changed my perspective yeah. on that game difficulty. That was awesome. 
but it was you know it didn't play as well as I would have liked, especially now that I've seen the uh, the, the light at the end of the tunnel of PC elitism. But I think that uh, potentially from software could get you know their engine a little bit better and, and release or reveal yeah. Bloodborne two and, and make so many fans happy. DJ apparently so. tells me my opinion sucks daily. Thanks, DJ. <laughs> <laughs> DJ, good man. Fuck you, DJ. My You're unmodded. <laughs> Now, the creative director, I believe creative director for God of War, stated already that there's been no DLC plans or anything for God of War. I call BS on it. I have a feeling I there's think so they'll many do sections yeah. in the game that seem like they could they could add on and there's certain things there. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling true, they're going to announce that there's going to be another part of the game that you're going to be able to, you're going to download and you could, a, a, like a little expansion or something else that you could go and there'll be another version of a map or something that, that you could do to God of War. I feel like that's what it is. I feel like he, it, the way he said it seemed like it was too scripted. The way he said, "Oh, there's no plans he or anything." He planned out now. the bullshit. Okay. Thank you, guys. Bullshit. I swear, like I feel like there's too many sections in that game. Even see, there's games mm -hmm. that parts that you could go to, you couldn't. You're restricted. That that to me shows like they're still adding on to it or building to it. You know what I mean? I feel like that's what it is, and I feel like they're gonna do. I mean, it's not a big thing, but for people like God of War to have a whole new section and more to the story go on. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I would, so. Ooh, that'd be great news. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm really excited to see, like, Ghost of Tsushima. I want to see what Death Stranding is about. You know. You um, think we'll get gameplay for Death Stranding? Yes. <laughs> Good Absolutely. luck. That's Could one of my predictions. Luck? We will finally get gameplay <laughs> for so. it. But I think it'll be Good, I mean, really early. Like, I don't know. I mean, it could, it, it's more than likely a vertical yeah. slice. We've already seen kind of what the game is about. Norman Reedus and, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Del Toro. Guillermo Benicio Del Toro? Toro? Yeah. yeah well, Guillermo. Um, that's the wrong one. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, I want to see what this game is about. I want to see at least what the gameplay looks like. Spider-Man looks like it's going to be awesome. But the one I'm most excited for is The Last of Us 2. And I think that at E3 we're going to see The Last of Us 2's multiplayer. And that there will make me jizz all over the TV. And my kids will say, Dad, what is that? And I'll say, shut up and watch TV. Because uh, <laughs> it, it'll be earth-shattering news once I see that multiplayer. I might still, just live on my stream. I'm going to be streaming all the conferences. So, yeah, you guys will I mean, see me just my pants live on stream. The Last of there Us is go. still my favorite multiplayer of all time. Uh, I don't think there's anything better. Nothing uh, to this day. It's still my favorite multiplayer ever I've ever played in my life. So I want to see if they you know, improve on that. Uh, there's been a lot of people asking for certain things. I think there's a ton of ways they can make this more enjoyable and exciting. So I want to see the multiplayer. Please, please, not show me some multiplayer. Yeah, and I think they're going to show I, a lot of um, yeah. Ghost of Tsushima as well, and then I'll have an early 2019 release. I think that game was coming out early, early next year. I think that game's probably pretty far in development, because Sucker Punch hasn't released a game since Infamous Second Son. That was a long time ago. I think mm. I think that game's coming early, early 2019. I think that game's almost done, to be honest. I bet when we see and, it, and, and, it'll be almost done. Yeah. Well, but Death Stranded, though, the, I think Death Stranded is going to have a trailer. At the end of the trailer, or footage you're gonna be left wondering what the hell did i just see just like every <laughs> other footage no kidding trailer, that's like, a good yeah, prediction so yeah. like, what just happened sony will <laughs> show death stranding that. everyone will be like what the fuck was that yeah <laughs> <laughs> like what just pretty happened? much <laughs> what the... oh. but that's what makes oh, like i said like i said earlier that's what makes sony so special that's nerdy they, they yeah. let their developers... They, they let just them dream. They let blow them the doors try. off. Like, they're like... Yeah. And it's going to pay off. Yeah. You know, people know what Kojima's his pedigree yeah. is. We know what Metal Gear has been. You know, yeah. we don't want Metal Gear zombies, you assholes. Yeah. Konami, we want, you know, what Kojima built for us. Or we want Symphony of the Night remastered. I think mm -hmm. that would be one reason to revisit Konami. Uh, Konami, if you can hear this, if you just remaster Symphony of the Night, I'll buy at least one more game from you. Uh, before I do a total ban, or if we have <laughs> Silent Hills with the, uh, you know, Norman that Reedus. was the best one. It's uh, that oh. was freaking sick. I played that over and over and over. A freaking God, demo. Like, like it. That I, was, still have, I still have. I still have. I'm not playing. Yeah, I, I deleted by accident. And I don't have the place anymore anyway. But that sucks. But yeah. Yeah. Once you delete it, it's gone. I I I, I convert it <laughs> and put a new hard drive in. But you have to move it. But yeah, I still have mine. Damn it, Konami. Konami. You idiots. Konami! Right, so the last little bit of information we got is on our thoughts of the Nintendo. Uh, what are these called? Uh, teacup rallies? What are they? What does Nintendo do? They do like a little show where like 70-year-old Japanese men come out and try to be cool. Yeah, and they did like a robot chicken uh, thing one year. And they did party. some other stuff, you know? Yeah, treehouse party. That's what it is. Here it yeah. goes. They have a tea party, basically. Because that's cool. Nintendo tea party. Yeah. <laughs> right? Let me see if switch I can... to this. 
let's switch to Nintendo. It doesn't sound the same. No, it's not Damn the it, same. Nintendo. Now I feel like I've been duped. I want to be so. Oh, man. Every time. So, I don't know what's going on with Nintendo. Uh, I'm actually hopeful that we get some more ports um, of, of some third-party games. Uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily need to have uh, multiplayer kind of experiences on the Switch. I like my kind of quaint single-player uh moments on the switch i think it's awesome games like doom that, that have been playable on this thing games like skyrim skyrim playable on the switch i, I want to see more of that i think that's making the switch more and more popular of course the first parties what more skyrim have, 2 though? for switch oh that would be fucking insane <laughs> uh, but but they uh, still have a, a few guys. ips that they could show stuff on they could do a metroid game they just did donkey kong they could do a new metroid for the well switch. metroid prime corruption 4 i'm sure they'll be showing that yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, they could announce the end of the 3DS so they can focus 100% on the Switch. Uh, I think that might be a good idea because people with the Switch, it's kind of like marrying both worlds. Didn't they just, uh, they just released a new TV, uh, two, uh, the 2D. Uh, didn't they yeah. just 2DS? That was, la- that was last year. Um, no, then, was there another one that they 2DS announced? XL. Yes, they did just yes, come out with that. Yes, there's a 2DS last XL. Year. That's what they just... Yeah. Last year, Please, yeah. Uh, why would you buy... If you have a 3DS XL, it's like, the same thing. Just turn the 3D off. <laughs> Who the fuck knows? <laughs> it's like a license yeah. to print money. Jeez. Yeah. I know. Like, I, I predict um, a more durable box. A bunch of boxes are more durable. That's what they're going to do. No, but seriously, they're going to have different cutouts now. They're going to do a whole bunch of different things that you could do with boxes. They're going to play on that now for a while. Yeah, so now people stuff bought for Labo. Now yeah. they're going to be like, oh, we're going to do a boat. How about people a box really of like sales it. and shit like that? People like, really like <laughs> it, but I, I just can't. I can't. You even get Labo for your place. kids, Beastly? I think that would have been what cool. Kids? What kids? I ain't got no kids, Robbie. Wow. Don't even okay. remind them that they're kids. I want them to think that they're supposed to be working and I'm giving them the day off. You know what's cool? If you go online, they actually show you that ways to cut out cardboard parenting. on your own. <laughs> yeah, they, they show you ways to cut out cardboard on your own that you could just build yeah. your like, well, Labo, it comes with scissors. Just buy, and just buy the game, that's it. You can do any board you want. <laughs> yeah, so. I mean, Nintendo's smart. It's like uh, every time they come up with an idea to make money, someone just snaps their fingers and the money just comes. So, I mean, we'll see. I'm excited to see. We didn't really talk about, well, I guess we did talk about it earlier. This show's been going on for seven hours, I think. Uh, We've been on for quite a while. Do you guys think that uh, PlayStation might show or talk about the potential of a new handheld at all? Yes? No? (sighs) No. I don't. Uh, No, it's too early. No. no. I'll I'll leave it at that then. So it sounds like Sony's going to win E3 again. Maybe they'll uh, reveal Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. You know it comes what? Out in I do. Oh man, I just I hope this press conference is like 2015 and 2016s because they blew the freaking doors off. Like I, I hope they just have some insane surprises. Oh yeah, Shinmu three. They're going to show Shinmu three, and it's still going to look like. I have a feeling yeah, Xbox is going. I have a feeling they're going to announce something big. I really do. That I feel they're going to announce something big. Whether it's going to change. The way game is played, I feel I still feel like they're gonna get a third party company that's huge and it's gonna be exclusively on Xbox. I have a feeling mm-hmm. that that's what's gonna happen and it's gonna be like the biggest thing since sliced bread. Borderlands 3, maybe? <laughs> I'm doing a low what? carb diet, so screw sliced bread. Big Borderlands? No, that'll be that'll piss me off. <laughs> they don't wanna piss me off with that shit. I swear <laughs> I'll throw my And I have an Xbox One X. And I don't even want to play Borderlands on that. Like, that's the thing. Like, I want to play that strictly. I mean, no, they as long as they, they keep it consistent, you can play on PC or something, I'm cool with it. Oh, yeah, it'll but be on like, PC probably. Yeah, if it's just Xbox yeah. One exclusive, then I'm going to be pissed. Oh, like, fuck no. I'm going to throw my Xbox out the window <laughs> if that happens. <laughs> fuck this thing. Yeah, I'm throwing <laughs> it away. I'm checking it out, and it's going to the garbage. Well, it looks like that's the conclusion of our E3 thoughts for Beastly Thoughts Reunion. Uh I really love you guys. It's been far too long. Uh, and as Robbie said at the beginning of this fantastic show, we'll keep you guys updated on what's going on with us in the future on Twitter. So please follow Robbie, myself, and Not Too Nerdy on Twitter for future updates. We'll let you know we're going to at least start off trying to do this thing at least once a month. We just got to coordinate. You know, I do yeah. another podcast. And Robbie does a lot of uh, uh, Twitch stuff. And uh, Not Too Nerdy has been kind of away from YouTube and, and doing videos. And he, mm-hmm. he's uh, voiced his want and desire to get back I'm into the back. Fray. I'm coming back, people. I'll be, he's I'll be he's, he's coming back. He's making the comeback, speed. baby. Woo! Make a comeback, baby. I'm making a comeback. This get is ready. My first, Subscribe uh, to Not Too Nerdy on around. YouTube. Get ready for that comeback. It's going to be This, uh, yeah. uh, this be has lit. been really fun. Um, I'm so happy we did it. Uh, like I said, no joke uh, and no homo. 
Uh, really missed you Full guys. homo. You this guys... is okay, Beastly. It's a reunion. Full homo. I didn't know he could tell everybody. <laughs> Go right in. I wasn't too sure about that, eh? That's what I was <laughs> oh my God. But uh, this has been a hell of a lot of fun. And, and the time flew by, but we had a yeah. great time. Yeah, we've been on for and about two hours-ish. More than two hours. Yeah. Long you show, guys, but that was awesome. Check me out on uh, Twitter. <laughs> like the pause. Just check me Beastly. out. Beastly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at the, the, the comments. Check me out on Twitter, Beastly Gamer Max. And uh, I'll definitely tell you what you want to hear. Anything. Yeah. And uh, check out these guys on Twitter. Not yep. too nerdy. Not, not too nerdy. At, at it... not too nerdy, correct. Yep. Okay. And Rob is skull. Or Rob is cool. It's Rob is skull. Countries. Yeah, like you said. Yeah, but yeah, that's pretty much going to do it, guys. And like we said, we don't know necessarily if this show is going to be a monthly thing, if it's going to be a weekly thing. We definitely want to keep doing it for the future. I mean, I'm so excited to be back with we these guys. We are going to do it because I had a lot of damn fun. Hell yes, yeah, we are good. absolutely going to continue doing the show. Just in what time, what day of the week, we're not too sure yet. We will figure all that out. But guys, everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, E3 is going to be very soon. We're about two weeks away as of now. Uh, yeah, we'll be talking these about that. Yeah, subscribe sure. to both these guys on YouTube, follow all of us on Twitter, and uh, yeah, I personally, I'm going to be streaming all of the E3 conferences, EA, Bethesda, Square Enix, Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, the whole lot, it's going to be a lot of fun, and yeah, the video will probably have this show as well on these guys' YouTube channels, so check it out there. I have it up on my YouTube channel in about 30 minutes. Awesome, and yeah, you can watch it live every week, or whenever we figure it out on this on this stream right here. Thank you all so much for joining, guys. And uh, we will hopefully see you on the next show. Until then, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. And we'll, we'll talk to you all later. Thank you so much for joining us. This is us. me, guys. Look, it's me. Thank you so much, everyone. We appreciate every one of you. Oh, you shaved. Yeah, well, he's Hispanic. I don't know if you knew Chewy is Hispanic. Ah, okay, I continue. Didn't know. All right, all right. <laughs> Anyone got any clo anything, last things you want to say? Uh, No. I just want to say thank you. It's been fun, and I know we're going to continue this, but I missed it. I definitely missed it. And, uh, yeah, I missed uh, filming, you know, YouTube in general, Twitch, whatever it is, streaming live. It's like – it's, it's We'll get fun, together, so. guys, uh, someday soon when we all have time. We'll just coordinate on Twitter, and we'll play some games together. Yeah, yeah and we can stream cool. it. And, you know, I actually have a PC that can play games. It's, oh, it's yeah, amazing. absolutely. That's a good thing to point out as well. Yeah. I'm going to be streaming. Hopefully, we're going to be – playing a ton of games together. Uh, these guys yeah. can make videos about it as well. I mean, it's going to be a huge collaboration going forward, and I am I gotta so excited. i got to make a video about your newfound beard, Robbie. <laughs> I can't wait and, to see this video. Oh, man. We all have uh, pretty decent cameras, internet looks like, and microphones. Let's hey, there you up. go. <laughs> Baby, look at this. I got an actual stand for my microphone now. I got this little thing here. Yeah. Awesome nice. shit, guys. All right, guys. That is going to do it for the show today, everyone. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and we will see you all on the next Beastly Thoughts show. Bye-bye. See you guys.